talk is money, honey. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. It's like bees to the honey. The sauce cast, baby. All right. Welcome, everybody, out there in internet land to the sauce cast. My name is Adam Sosnick. I'm losing my voice, and we got a big weekend coming up. So I need everybody's help because you're going to be doing all the talking today. Is that cool? Yes. yes. Everyone's agreement? Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you, Nat. You're welcome. Um, welcome to the sauce cast, <laughs> sexiest show in the world. Take a look at everybody here. Um, Big weekend coming up. We're going to explain that, why I need to save my voice, and why these guys and my co hostesses over here and these studs and these beautiful ladies are going to be doing the talk. I'm going to explain that in a second. But today, we're talking Diddy, oh. everything that's going on with that. We're talking Sam Bakeman Freed, FTX. You don't need to be a crypto expert to realize this dude is going to jail for 25 years. We're talking allegations, some shady stuff they're calling out. One of the biggest podcasters in the world, his name is Andrew Huberman. You know this dude. You're in the fitness world, health and wellness world. Both of you guys see what's going on there. And the happy ending I did not see coming. No. A man who has slept with more women than anyone says he thinks monogamy is better than anything. Let's go. That man's name is Dan Bilzerian. So, Dea, um, I'm going to hook you up with Dan. <laughs> I know you're looking for one man, no. so we'll see what's going on with that. Um, with that being said, we got some studs in the house today. My dude, Mike Rashid, is in the house. Mike, tell the people who you are, what you got going on. Thank you for having me. I'm Mike Rashid King. I'm a serial entrepreneur, former professional boxer. I mentor men. Um, I'm an author. That's new. You know, just a a person that's living life on 10 and to the max. That's plug right. the book, plug the book, Mike. The book is called The Divine Quintessence, right? Mm -hmm. Or The Q. It's not out yet, but we're close. I'm not rushing it. There's no deadline on the release. Mm -hmm. Cause I want it to be perfect. So Pre-sale, where can they get it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, go to MikeRasheed.com, just uh, drop your email and we will be following up with you to let you know what's good. There Actually, it is. I got a link for you for this. Thank you. This should be here right, right now. And so. by the way, if you don't buy the book, Mike oh. shows up at your door. <laughs> you can get that book. And I'm gonna just all I'm gonna do is be like, look at you disappointed, like, mm -mm. no, <laughs> and walk away. Natty, my girl, yes. when you learn to read, yes, we gonna get you that book. Oh, thank no. you. Do are you doing audio? Will there be audio? Audio, <laughs> braille, perfect. Braille, That's all I need. All right. <laughs> thank you. Solving the problems. <laughs> all right. You know, I saw this next at like, Kean Leg. Did I say the last name right? Loggy. Loggy. It's a European thing, y'all. Kian Logie, respect to you. First time I saw this dude was on the Alphas versus Betas debate with Justin Waller, my good buddy, was on that. Mm. Was Destiny on there? Sorry, no, Destiny. I, I, no. You were definitely an Alpha, bro. Definitely not the Beta I was thinking on on this. Um, in the Jubilee? Yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't in there. All right, but okay. we know he would have been an Alpha. Totally. For sure. My bad, Destiny. The alpha of the betas. Um, <laughs> then I saw you recently in Miami at the Epic Talks event. Shout out to Melissa. We yeah. connected. I said, let's get you on the show. Nice. Um, tell the people who you are, Room. I'm a former NFL athlete turned heart-centered transformation coach. So I bridge the gap between the red pill and I'd say the mainstream societal softer part of how things are functioning. Mm which I think is very necessary. I think the red pill has gone way too far. I think the society has gone way too far in the other direction, so I bridge the gap there. People call me the genie because I grant wishes. So what, what is it about the red pill that you think has gone too far? I think they're very disconnected from intimacy and connection, which I grew up in a family that had a lot of that. My parents are still the happiest couple I've ever seen today. So I have a very positive association with a man and a woman growing up together, and I'm not saying that's a dynamic that I want. I'm different from my parents, but I think a lot of the guys on there haven't had very positive associations with the male female dynamic and what it can look like when there's deep intimacy. And I help men be able to connect to that deeper place of intimacy separate from the external facade they put up to make themselves look valuable. Mm -hmm. So we might dip into our, our little toes out here into the red pill. You know? Yeah. You think about that? Yeah. Um, excited to have you here, bro. Excited to be here. We got the ladies me. in the house. Amy Danger failed. What's going on? Hi. Um, about the same as every week. Super happy to be here. Excited for a great show. 
That's it. I told you you can have two sentences. You didn't want to take nope. it. You, got, you gave me one. That was one sentence. You can get that two, was one Amy. sentence. <laughs> you can get two. Jay Marie's back. Yes, I am. Thanks for having me back. It's always so awesome to be here. Um, but I'm a fitness coach, and I kind of help women um, help transform their lives and to become better versions of themselves. So awesome. I'm happy to be here. Beautiful. Yeah. Deya Bazan is in the house. She's hey. currently maybe considering... No, Dan Bilzerian, we'll see. <laughs> I know you're looking for a good Christian conservative yes, man. Good man. <laughs> if I was Christian or conservative or good, I could qualify. I just, <laughs> not, <laughs> my thing. I'm a good dude. I'm a good son, mom. The Lord will get you, Adam. Don't you and worry. So, my people invented the Lord. <laughs> okay, there was no today. Lord until my people showed up. Oh, 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 is is that true? Oh, wow. Is that true? <laughs> Monotheism. <laughs> no, I, I get my Mike Rashid here. My confidence Happy goes Happy Easter, up. everybody. <laughs> Happy Easter. Go ahead, Dea. Tell you what you're Anyways, though. so my name is Dea, and uh, I have I'm an actress, and I have a business. It's called Art Me Up, and my mission is to spark joy, to radiate light to anyone I encounter, um, all people. Thank you, mm -hmm. Dea. Remember With that smile. He has risen this weekend. Yes, he yes. has. Have a little respect out there. <laughs> you yes, better have some respect. Put respect on my Put name. Put respect on Jesus' Just name. Just not to get all political. What religion was Jesus before he started his thing? Well, he was Jewish. Okay, all right. That's the end of the debate. <laughs> oh, my Because you're gosh. Jewish. You're like, yeah. That, you don't got to right, tell people that. They don't know. Right Flo's in the house. I haven't heart. seen you in forever. <laughs> but I did see you recently. <laughs> Where did I see you? Day. That's right. <laughs> if I remembered anything about my birthday, mm -hmm. I don't remember anything about that. I, I know you don't. Remember? I know you didn't. Um, yeah, I no, that was my great. Feet stepped on all night, unfortunately, because oh. people don't know how to walk. Mm -hmm. But yep. it's okay. That we still had fun. That's right. And model El Salvador. Miss Grand Florida 2022 and future Miss Universe El Salvador. There it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, El Salvador, Naib Bukele. The best president what a freaking to guy. ever exist. Somebody texts me the other day and goes, yo, Naib Bukele just posted a video of you and PBD like highlighting what he's done with MS-13. And I was like, what? The <laughs> president of El Salvador? Like, pretty intense what he's got pretty going on Pretty intense, out there. and it takes a lot of boldness and courage, and I think that's what separates a good leader from the rest. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's something that has <clears> caused <throat> a transformation in El Salvador and what has caused its bad fame to positive fame. And that's why even other children, they're being taught how to learn Bitcoin when right yeah. now they're teaching us or they're teaching our kids how to differentiate other things rather than things that can actually benefit them. For I the love future. it, I love it. I say this all the time. This is my personal belief. I believe that the children are the future. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you teach them well, you let them lead the way. Dang, Whitney Houston. You have to show them all the beauty <laughs> that they possess. I am reciting lyrics. Let them know. That's it's Adam. a sense of pride. There it is. That's off the top. That's off the top. That's off the top. No, from the shout, core. From the bottom Shout out to Whitney heart. Houston. <laughs> Whitney Hutton. <laughs> Dina's in the house. Dina. Do you remember seeing me on your birthday? No. <laughs> were you at my birthday? Yes, yes she was. was. I do remember that. Yes. Because you were with Kyle Grooms, my dude. Yes. And so, all right. yes. You I'm not that dude that gets blacked out. I don't remember anything. It was so early when they saw me. Though. Literally, <laughs> never. Like, I'm just I could do anything and everything. Just saying. Mean, everything. But I remember everything. So, Before great midnight. to see you. Sometimes I need a reminder. I remember who you were there with. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes. What's new? Um, nothing. Just out here doing the comedy thing, you know, being funny. Uh, opened up for D. Ray Davis last month. Nice. Um, producing a show now in Wynwood on a monthly basis. Nice. And mm -hmm. I will be heading out to Austin to the mothership next month. So let's see what happens. Amazing. Joe Rogan's Club. Yes, sir. You ever been there? Uh, no. This is me and another comic. We're kind of doing like this road trip content thing it to is get there. It is amazing. So. I know. I've I'll tell heard. you a quick story. So PBD has become very close friends with Rogan. Okay. And uh, we went to Rogan's studio to do the show, Joe oh, Rogan Experience. Um, we land in Austin. It's PBD, myself, Vinny, like our crew. Um, start driving around. We pull into the most unassuming, random strip mall. Like you would, you're like, where are we going? Like Costco, what's going on here? Boom, walk in, like gangster ass, former Navy SEAL, you know, opens the door. Like, you don't need to do a pat down. He's like, <laughs> You're good. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He eyeballed you like yeah. an eighth of weed. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I could take him. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's looking around. He looked at PPD like, ah, I look patchy down, you know. He looked at me and he's just like, yeah. bitch ass inside. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sir. No, it was cool. We had a great experience. His place is fucking amazing. The biggest gym you've ever seen. Arrow workout, this, yeah, that, the so other. Cool. Super dope. Um, for lunch, steak. Dinner, steak. Then we go to the um, Mothership. Ridiculous show he headlined. Of course. It was nice. awesome. Hey, guys, what are you doing after this? Want to get some more steak? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. It was a meat, but it was incredible. It was an amazing time. I wish you luck out there. Good times. Thank uh, you, sir. Save the best for last. The girls saved my life today. Saved my voice. Yeah. Team effort. I'm on steroids. I can't have you. I can't have you. They gave me a steroid shot for my voice. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a team thing. What's new, Nat? Well, first off, happy Sauce Cast Day. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Thank you guys all for coming out to make this episode happen. Um, we're super excited. We're going to be covering some good topics. I, I'm actually really excited to cover these topics with the panel we have today. Um, and I'm glad that you know we've got some different perspectives here. But thank you guys so much for subscribing. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. And then this weekend, we've got some stuff going on yep. that we'll be covering mm -hmm. in a few minutes. But make sure you guys do all that stuff. And let's get yeah. this party started. <laughs> Why wait a few minutes if we can do it now? Yeah. So my dude Malik's out here. Shout out to Malik, ladies Malik. and gentlemen. Clap it up. Malik the freak seven days a week. Um, PD Pablo, freak a leak. We know the deal, Malik. Malik, this weekend I'm saving my voice. Mm -hmm. Although I'm, I said I would, but I'm, I'm talking a lot because I'm, I'm hyped up. Yeah. Mike's, Mike's here. But after the show. Confidence. Then after that, rest. Um, we've got a big weekend coming up. Something mm -hmm. we did last year. Yep. Where we met. Our friend anniversary. That's right. Yay. Here we go. Oh, Put a ring on it, girl. So sweet. Put uh, a ring on it. This <laughs> weekend, mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, you guys are invited. Yes. You guys are invited. Your mom's invited. Your, girl, your, your grandma's invited. Your wife's invited. Your wife and your girlfriend's invited. <laughs> Keep them on separate sides. Uh, it's model volleyball, the, the, literally the sexiest event in the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there filming. Last year, PBD did the coin opening toss. coin toss with the cops versus the firefighters, celebrities, influencers. Who's been there? Who's performed there? I interviewed Vince Vaughn there. Mm -hmm. Travis Scott's performed there. Mm -hmm. Flo Rider's been there. Mm -hmm. I think Gronk from the NFL. My dude, Chris Humphreys. Kelly Olenek. Celebrities, influencers. Oh, and by the way, Flo and... 200 of her friends, <laughs> models, and when I say models, they're beautiful. I don't mean like, oh yeah, she does OnlyFans, she's an OnlyFans model. I'm not talking about little trashy bitches. Oh. I'm talking about actual hey, they have feelings models. Too. No, they have feelings too, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about real models. They have feelings, but do they have an agent, Nat? That's the well, question. Well, You'll be surprised. That's the difference. That's the uh, Malik, you get the picture of what's going on? Damn. Well, let's see. We've got our flyer. So this is the flyer. Yes. Nice. Live event, South Beach. Who's that? Is that what is that, that guy Who's in the that middle guy? right there? Who's that? This Adam must, Sauce. This is must be the wrong be version. This is insane. Why is That's he on the flyer? Tell him out. Look at that. Look at the smile. You know what that face? You know what that face? Wait a minute. Are you smizing? That's the face. He's smizing, guys. How the hell did I end up on the cover of this thing? Like that? <laughs> this guy? What, who did you pay out of? Yeah. Who did you pay? I'm the kind of guy that wakes up in the morning, looks in the mirror, and goes, You again? Yes. You? Yes, no, yes, but yes. I'm good. I got confidence. We're good. So one thing I got is confidence. Yes. Um, but it's going to be a sexy event, a lot yeah, of fun. Hype it up. We're going to have a lot of fun there. There's going to be also a meet and greet. You'll meet some of the talents that we got with Valuetainment. Yep. We're also looking for some talent. I am your recruiter. I'm your HR lady. Um, but I'm not HR on the beach. But I am looking for talent. So if you guys feel like you have what it takes, you guys want to meet the team, you guys want to be a part of history when it comes to Valuetainment and this relationship with Model Volleyball, come join us. Have fun. There's tacos so make sure you guys are ready to eat yes. you know drink responsibly um, but most of all make some connections you know a lot of, of this is about making connections so make some connections have some fun enjoy the beautiful weather this weekend and we'll see you guys there it's gonna be an amazing time yeah. saturday and sunday march 30th the 31st south beach yeah. 18th and collins in the sand uh right behind the shellbourne in miami beach 
What's your biggest memory from last year? Meeting you guys. Right? Oh, Meeting you guys. We didn't even have to so pay her many. to say that. We met so many great women right. from the event, too. Yes. So it was really nice to even kind yes. of ex expand that network in that sense. Um, so, yeah, come meet us. I, I like to meet you guys. So There we go. Uh, guys, ladies, thank you for being here. You two freaking studs, mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Now you guys are going to be doing all the talking. I'm done here. <laughs> um, let's get this party started. Okay. So... Breaking news. Mm -hmm. Have any of you guys heard what's going on with this guy, Diddy? Little no, not at no, all. No, nothing? No. Who's Sean that? Epstein? <laughs> oh, Diddy Epstein? Sean Epstein? Oh. Sean Epstein. I'm thinking about my girl, Cassie. Um, Are we talking about you? Carisha Maxwell? Me and you was the hottest <laughs> song in the world Cassie, we at a time. You. Here's the deal. <laughs> we all know what's going on with Diddy. It's insane. These allegations, these stories, who's coming out, who's talking. We're going to be covering all that today. Um... This dude has gone from making hits to making money, billionaire, mm -hmm. to making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. No good news has come out with Diddy in months, yeah. especially right now. Diddy's homes in Miami and LA ransacked by Homeland Security and the feds. His two sons were handcuffed, phones, laptops, guns, seized from both of the properties. His jet takes off to Antigua. Turns out he's not in it. Mm. Who's in it? Apparently, his white boy drug mule is on the plane. Um, he lands. They find coke and edibles in his bag. His name was Brendan Paul. Diddy was spotted at the Miami Opalaka Hialeah. Is the place that, you know that? <laughs> the flea market. Jane, you know about that. Okay. He, was, he was spotted there. At the, uh, yeah, there, they, at the he was airport. not arrested. There's an airport there. Yeah. There's that? a private airport there. The private airport, the Open Lock Airport. Um, they're like, where the hell is this guy? He has not been arrested. There were, there were stories about that. Not true. Diddy's jet, as of today, actually arrived back in Miami, yeah. but it, was, it disappeared from the public tracking site, FlightAware, per the owner's request. So Diddy, I guess, did that. But Diddy hasn't been seen in the public in recent days since the, uh, the day of the raid, um, charges stemming from sex trafficking, sex trafficking of minors, graping, um, and a whole host of allegations. Diddy, Bad Boy Entertainment, Biggie. Can't stop, what, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, because we can't <laughs> stop. Take that, take that. Uh, <laughs> could end up facing life in prison. It's absolutely insane. Malik, put up his comment. Um, in the meantime, here's the lawyer's comment. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search war warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. That's Diddy's lawyer's comment. Diddy made a comment prior to that Let's pull this up. Nat, help me out here. It says, uh, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try and assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of these awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Sean Diddy Combs. Okay. I thought his name was Love. <sighs> It? Here's what I can tell you. Um, we've seen what you, you said it was, what was the nickname you gave him? Sean Epstein. Sean Epstein. Yeah. Diddy Epstein. Right. So there's stories we've heard in the last few years. Mm -hmm. The Harvey Weinsteins of the world. Right. The Bill Cosbys of the world. Right. The Epstein himself dude of the world. Guilty. Then there's other stories mm -hmm. like the Johnny Depp situation. Turns out she was a lying crazy bitch. Of course. Okay. Russell Brand. What's going on there? He was a Just sex icon for right. years in Hollywood. Everyone knew what he's doing. All of a sudden, he starts talking politics. Yeah, we found this out. Gets crazy. Mm. Yep. What was that? Andrew Tate. You know, PBD and myself had the two biggest interviews with Andrew Tate ever. Flew out to Madrid after he got canceled. Flew out to Romania after he got out of jail. You know where I stand on this. I think right. it's all a bunch of fabrication. So here's my question. I'm going to start with my dude, Mike. We know that there's stuff that is just straight guilty. 
and we know that their stuff is just like, yeah, I don't know about this. So, you know, Diddy made a statement. He basically is using the shaggy defense. It wasn't me. Yeah. Um, is the situation with Diddy a way more, yeah, this is an Epstein guilty type of thing, or is this a Johnny Depp Tate type of thing? Like, yeah, I don't know about this. Where do you stand on this? Yeah, I definitely don't think it's an Epstein situation. Because if you recall, Epstein was convicted of sexual assault prior of a minor prior to the most recent stuff. He has a legitimate track record, right? Did he? Listen, I know that maybe his... See, here's the, here's the issue. We live in a, in, a, in a time in which, you know, there's voyeurism into everybody's life, right? And you're looking into the life of a billionaire a billionaire who's actually, who happens to be a star as well, right? So he has everything and everybody around him at all times, the wildest parties. These are things that people used to not be privy to. Mm -hmm. But now that we are, people are casting judgment on him because it's weird, right? And being weird is not illegal. Now, I'm not saying that he hasn't done anything illegal, but I have a hard time believing that he actually forcibly raped anyone. I have a hard time believing that he's sex trafficking people. Like, he's a billionaire. He doesn't, he's not a pimp, right? Uh, drugs. But, but Epstein was a billionaire. Uh, okay, but the sex trafficking, all right, so if anybody know anything about the criminal justice system, what they initially do is they, they, they your indictment looks crazy. It'd be like 40 charges, mm -hmm. but they're really trying to get two, right? So that's, that's something that I feel like they can easily throw on there to try to like, Oh yeah, he was pimping these girls out too, because they actually flew from here to there, right? Because that's sex trafficking is flying someone across or taking someone across state lines to have them have sex for money, and you you reap the benefits of it. I'm sorry, I don't think that he did those things. Even the Cassie thing, um, I have a hard time believing that they were together for 11 years and it was as bad as she said it was mm -hmm. in the lawsuit. Of course, you got to stack it to try to get that payday, right? But she got her payday, and she shut up and just went away, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, people got to look at that. In 24 and, hours, by the way. 24 hours. And it was breaking thing. news. Here's Cassie, $30 million. So, as it was going on, the next day, settled. Nobody said anything. It was like, yeah. she's good. That was she's quick. Good. Like, what Here's happened? the thing. People got to realize, too. Look at these indictments, right? So Diddy didn't have to pay her anything. Like, when you, are, when you have that kind of wealth, and you are part of such big businesses, there's insurances for these things, right? Mm -hmm. At the bottom of the indictments, it showed, just highlighted like a uh, sign here to make sure this, the defendant's insurance is mm -hmm. in place, this, that, and the third, because that's what these lawyers are going for. They're going for paydays. Mm -hmm. Just like when that, when that lawsuit hit, there's a couple lawyers, they're interviewing people, everybody that had some kind of dealing with Diddy, like, you sure he didn't do this? You sure we can do this? You know how you get the, the mm -hmm. class action emails? Mm -hmm. It's a similar type of situation, right? Um, and I can tell you this, there's certain things that I know for a fact, right? <laughs> and I know for a fact, like this, the most recent, uh, the engineer, whatever his name is, that, that, that allegation. DJ, uh, Academics? No. no. Um, Rodney. You just Rodney. made an enemy. Rod Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> Rodney something. Yeah. Sorry. Right, I think so. it's Jones is his last name. Rodney something Jones. Like that. No, I saw Academics do a video on it. I yeah. must have misheard what you said. So here's the thing, like... I got a lot of issues with a lot of this, right? Because I know- Lil Rod is his name. Lil Rod. Yeah. Got it. I know people that's, that kind of like protects Diddy, right? And the people that, that I know are honorable people. You're saying you know people, yeah. security- Yeah. That roll with Diddy. That runs it. Go right? ahead. They're not gonna be down for certain things. These are mm -hmm. good people, religious people, people yeah. with ethics, people that don't play that shit. People that's highly sought after for, by a lot of people because of how they roll, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that my people are not gonna be okay with certain things. And then you, you know that they did a, the whole thing saying the guy got shot in the studio. Did he shot mm -hmm. the guy in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Like I happen to have been there the night after that. They had the whole perimeter blocked off mm -hmm. because this is what happens. Diddy was doing his album, so he was trying to collaborate with the hottest artists and producers. When we went there, everybody's there. I was like, somebody's gonna get robbed. Everybody's there with their jewelry. Like, it was, it was like a, a meat fest, because LA, 
is active. Mm-hmm. People don't know LA. LA is active, right? Yeah. What do you mean by active? Like, is 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 cats out there with their ears to the street, knowing who's where, yeah. and they're robbing. Just to come up, yeah. They're robbing. That's like yeah. the yeah. Wild, wild West. Oh, right I believe now. that about Literally. LA. Yeah. That guy. Uh, just look at all the headlines and the stores. So I believe they're doing it's, it to the it's, house it's parties. It's crazy. That guy got robbed. Mm. He got robbed outside. Came in the studio, dripping, but he he was fine. It was like a graze. The, mm-hmm. the hit. It was no, yeah, 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 but not by Diddy. Do you know how ludicrous it would be for Diddy and his son to take a man in the bathroom and shoot him mm-hmm. with hundreds of people inside for the sure. studio? Absolutely. Yeah, for it, sure. It doesn't make sense. It's yeah. the most bizarre thing, yeah. right? So, and they're talking about this like it's facts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about it is the guy that the guys that shot and robbed that guy, they're in jail. This is public information, but here's the thing: if somebody with some influence say these things, well, Diddy, you know, I, I think Candace Jones talked about it. And it was just, it was wrong. It was a lot. It was Candace not true. Owens? Yeah, Candace Owens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, and they brought up, like, a brother of mine, Fahim Mohammed. They said he has all these connections with the cops. I'm like, he don't. You know what I'm saying? Because you like, live pretty, in L.A., don't you? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're between L.A. So I'm out there. You're, yeah. And you also spend a lot of time in Miami. Yeah. You're in the fitness world, massive mm-hmm. influencer. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know security. Like, you know these people. The who's who. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. bottom line is, you know, we did a poll the other day. You know, do you think uh, did he did it? Like mm-hmm. guilty, um, innocent, and to prove it guilty. I think Malik can probably find that. Okay, I voted. Or just innocent. Well, guilty of what though? Exa- exactly. Yeah. We'll fit, we'll, but we're so quick, quick to rush to judgment. Mm-hmm. This country, the basic premise is innocent until proven guilty. Even Sam Bank McFried, which we're going to talk about today, guilty. But until today, he was innocent and to prove it guilty. We are so quick to rush to judgment. Malik, let me know if you have those results. You can talk. Um, here we go. Guilty AF, mm-hmm. 70% almost. Mm-hmm. 30% innocent to prove it guilty. That's me. By the way, That's what I hit. that technically should be 100%. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. 2%, if you can run that back. Innocent. What is he? The margin of error in any poll what are they is two to three percent. What's guilty of what? But guilty of whatever they think is going on. That's an issue, though. Mm-hmm. People should be like people should have some critical thinking mm-hmm. and have some nuance to their decision making and be like, all right, what are we talking about? Guilty okay. of, about what? Mm-hmm. No questions. Yeah, guilty. Can I that, ask that, you something? Do you do you feel like it's more so entirely fabricated, or would you say that there's some extent of it that is possibly like his being the full guy for something that's maybe a little bit bigger? I, th- I think that a lot of this is fabrication. Mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, this guy is a mega successful person who's been with every woman you could think of in the industry. So, and, I, and I'm sure people may have not left happy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, he, maybe he's not the nicest person to everybody, who knows? But the allegations, like the, 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 the graping and, you know, things like that, I'm just like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, now I know there's some sick people in the world, but you don't wait until you're 50 or whatever and powerful to start doing that to people. Mm-hmm. That's probably something that so you've been doing your my entire question, life. question, how do we not know that he didn't wait until 50? Because these rumors around him being a narcissist and being possessive and being abusive in relationships aren't new rumors. These aren't things that just popped up when they raided his house. That's not a rapist, though. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean you're a rapist. So, Grape. So as Grape. so as someone who is a woman, right, um, who's been in an abusive relationship with a very narcissistic person when I was very young, very impressionable, very similar to Cassie, right? So we're talking about someone who, when she met this person, because you're saying that you don't believe her allegations because how could she have been with him for 11 years mm-hmm. and all this stuff? So being someone who's been in an abusive relationship with someone who is narcissistic, who puts on a front to the world that they're this great person, Mm -hmm. but behind closed doors, it's a completely different animal. I did stay in that relationship for seven years. Why? Because I was 18, 19, and I thought that this person, which every woman does in any relationship that she enters at that age, could show me something about the world or about being a better person or perhaps achieving some goal or some incentive for me at the end. Because every 18, 19-year-old 
good looking woman, when presented with an opportunity to be with someone powerful, that's what she's thinking. So what makes you think that it wasn't 11 years of her fighting this wanting to leave, but in the same token, it's an abusive relationship. Being in the dynamics of an abusive relationship, that's like psychological warfare every day of your life, the entire time that you're with this person. Why? Because you're terrified that when you do leave, the world is gonna look at you and be like, what the fuck is your problem? Because nobody knows that monster so Dina, behind closed great, doors. Great, great analogy here. I'm gonna give a chance to Mike to respond. <clears throat> uh, how did you get out? <sighs> I woke up one day and I left. Just I like realized that? realized it wasn't, Seven yeah. years, just out. Swear to God, that's exactly what happens. You have like this moment of realization where it's either, it's my life or it's theirs. So this is it. This is my moment. This so, is how I can leave. It's just By the way, a switch. respect to her. For yeah, sure. yeah, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. So couldn't the same be true for Cassie? That's what I'm saying. Okay. It comes to a point where your spirit is so broken down and you've been through all these things which you're taught to be ashamed of yeah. while you're in the situation, which is another aspect of the psychological fucked upness yeah. that happens in a dynamic like that. So you're taught to be ashamed of the things that you may have done because of this relationship. You're taught to be like, oh, well, when you leave, everyone's just gonna think you're a piece of shit anyway, so why would you do that? But like, that's not the illegal part, part, though. You have yeah. to be mindful, because I can relate. I can relate to you a thousand percent, but what you run into is that it goes from, you know, I'm in this relationship and it's toxic and all these terrible things are happening to me, but you're also there. So you're putting yourself I totally there. Get now, that, if it comes but, to the point of where, okay, it gets physical in any inappropriate way, if that's, you know, aggressive or the graping or, and that, and they can prove that, then of course disciplinary action is. Now, if we're talking well, about real the quick, indictment, I'm gonna ask she the does mention all of those Dina, things. Dina, she one second. She mentioned she was drugged. Dina, one second. Just to be clear here for the ladies, somehow even the men, how many of you guys have been in an abusive relationship? Show of hands. I don't see that. So one? What does that tough. mean, abusive? Say it yeah, tough. Yeah, like, like what, what type of abuse? I, how would you Emotional, define Emotional, physical, there's a, there's verbal. Let's start with We're physical. I don't know how you define emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. You tell me. I don't know how you define verbal abuse. Right. But physical, you can fucking define. Of yeah. course. How would you define it? I mean, there's, I think there's different levels. Like, there's women who have been mm -hmm. in... You know, relationships with men who, uh, you know, have like, I guess the, the gaslighting and all that could be very emotional, abu you know, abuse to a woman that they're probably in there for so long. It's like back and forth. And you're like in this like, you know, huge cycle of that. So that's also abusive. Okay, so... Uh it's, it's really it's, difficult because yeah. I feel like oftentimes like women are very quick to call things abusive relationships and it really kind no, no, of no. dis it, it no, but, no, but, but honestly they are because a yes, lot of women do. there's but so do you know how many nowadays, women can you let me yes, finish? Do. do you know how many women nowadays. literally say that guys are um, narcissistic that they're this do you know how rare it is for someone no, to actually be a narcissist what the actual incident right. of narcissism is it's tiny I'm not women saying misuse that. these words and throw them around and no, it discredits no, no. the women who actually go through those situations I'm not saying that I totally in my give opinion. you all the respect on that Amy and you're talking about your generation no offense remember I'm a little bit older I come from a different time you know what I mean as as Crazy as it might seem, those 10, 15 years makes a huge difference. Are we 10 years different? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we are. Really, girl? Yeah, I'm old as fuck. Were, were, you, sure. sexually <laughs> oh, oh, were, were you sexually or physically abused by that guy? By that person? Yeah. Uh, all, any form of abuse that you could possibly think of, I was abused. I wasn't talking individual. about you as well, by the now, way. I want to be very no, clear. No, 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 I, I know that you're not talking yeah. about me, but I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about because, as he mentioned, we do live in a world of this like perverse sense of voyeurism where these mm -hmm. words do get thrown around just mm -hmm. because I read a definition in a dictionary. Mm -hmm. And I think that it applies right. because I want it to mm -hmm. apply to me. I get that. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the dynamic in this specific relationship as it relates to everything that she said in that indictment, as someone who's been in a position of being in an abusive mm -hmm. relationship, I think she's telling the truth. Okay, that's what I want to ask the ladies. Uh, are you guys familiar with who Diddy dated for 11 years? Did yeah. we not know Cassie. Cassie? You can pull her up, gorgeous girl. Yeah. By the way, Cassie, if you ever see this, that song, Me and You, Thank you. Classic. <laughs> that helped your boy out make a when he didn't really no. have that much game. I was like, just put the song on. It's yes. over. It's done. Sorry, oh, ladies. Um, who doesn't believe Cassie here? Show of hands. Does not believe her. 
I would need to read the. Okay. I would need to read it. So I need to read the court. I'm not, guys. We're not reading the fucking court case now. You know what? She accused of him. Right. Some weird ass shit. Physical, right. Emotional abuse. Settlement. None of you guys think that she's lying. So Mike was the only guy. I don't think I have no clue. Okay, you don't know. No, I don't know. So you're just sitting this one out, pleading the fifth. No, I just don't give a fuck. Okay. So I think I think that's the problem. I think I think that's the problem is why so many people give so many fucks about this. Yeah. Like people care so much about the lives of other people, and it's fucking disgusting. And that's what's the problem with society right now, and that's what bothers me so much, yeah. is that people would rather obsess over other people's lives and not take accountability for their own. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be the person that they're truly meant to be, and they'd rather jerk off to dudes mm-hmm. like Andrew Tate, which mm-hmm. I think he's got a lot of great points. I'm not saying he's bad. But they'd rather jerk off to other people's lives than actually mm-hmm. take accountability for their own. Mm-hmm. And it's sick to me how these people are even as big as they are. It's because the people care so much about their lives. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's yeah. not good for us to talk about. I know it's child sex trafficking and, and uh, abuse with women is something that's very hot, popular topics right Right now, and I think it's ironic timing for this to come out now. Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know, and, and I don't think people should obsess over it. I think people should wait until the court case comes out and that actually happens. But take care of your life. Like take yeah. care of your own fucking house. Like do things that you need to do to be able to become the person you need to be mm-hmm. for the people in your life. Ken, I I agree with you, kind of, and I'll tell you why. Perfect. Um, I say this all the time on the Peabody podcast. The people, are, you know. Right, hey, fire Adam. No, Adam's a man. Blah, blah. And one of the things I always say is, stop worrying about what's going on in the White House, and start worrying about what's going on in your house. Mm-hmm. I think we all can co-sign that. Mm-hmm. But the the part B is like, okay, I also want to vote for the fucking president. Mm-hmm. I also want to know what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody knows who O.J. Simpson was. Like, if you gave this speech to everybody about O.J., I'd be like. Yeah, I'm gonna find out what happened with OJ. You know? <laughs> hey, bro, don't fucking listen to Johnny Depp. It's like, how much of Pirates of the Caribbean? I gotta know if he's a psychopath or not. Yeah. <laughs> the reality is, people are gonna wanna find out what the hell happened with Diddy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But you are right. Yep. Yeah. You should focus more on your life, and I think most people are. But there is certainly mm-hmm. some truth mm-hmm. in that people are obsessing about everyone else's shit. Yeah. Well, they should focus on the world. But it, it's also the emotional investment element to it as well. It's like I can be aware of what's going on and happening in the world without being overly emotionally invested. Mm-hmm. I think that's a problem. I, I, I agree. I don't think anyone's going to leave here tonight and be like, fuck it, dude. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Maybe not people here. Cause pe- people, people here care about their own lives, I think, generally. But I think a lot of people out there that yeah. are brainwashed because they can't independently think to be able to yeah, be so consumed You know what those people are called? But Losers. Right. <laughs> you know how you fix being a loser? You don't. <laughs> you're a fucking loser unless you change your life. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. kind of essentially what you're saying. Mike, um, question for you guys. Uh, I'll speak to the ladies. Um, you brought up the fact that you and Amy kind of just got into it a second ago. No She's way. like, I love getting it. into it. It's a healthy thing. Is, is this your show? You got into it. You got into it. These two were <laughs> fighting like cats and dogs. I thought they were fighting. I thought they were about security. They're about to throw down. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I got my kid. I was like, um. Jay was intimidated. Uh, okay, okay. Just like old this. women. <laughs> can't believe them. <laughs> lying about a fight. That's not true. Here's the point. Uh, you bring up a very good point. In the 90s. It's different. It if is. a girl said some shit, it was like, oh, it, yeah. it probably yeah. happened. Right. The Me Too movement starts. Social media starts. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, Harvey Weinstein, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill Cosby, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Johnny Depp, well, no. Exactly. And then the, perva- the perva- mm-hmm. pervading narrative was believe all women. Mm-hmm. Believe all women. Mm-hmm. And we've Which seen- Which is a very dangerous narrative. Mm-hmm. We- yes. I don't think you should believe all, Absolutely. anybody. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we've seen videos here, we played on the show. Yeah. Like, I think it was the Adam 22 20, podcast. Yeah. By the way, His shout out to you, Adam 22. Yeah, I was here that day. He might be coming soon oh, yeah. here. Um, the lady was just like, yeah, I lied. I straight oh, up yeah. fucking lied. Like, I lie called the way. cops. Yeah. Saying this on air. Yeah. I called the cops. They took away his kids. Ain't hey, I the shit? We're like, no, you're a psychopath. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yeah. So mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, the, the little girl that cried wolf situation, mm-hmm. I don't know how long is that, that's going to last. Sort of the Cassie thing right here. But where I wanted to ask you was, today, a few hours ago, we had Trump's lawyer on Alina Haba, right? We could probably show an image yeah, of her. He's got it. Um, well, he got and it. we were talking about the Diddy situation. And 
There she is right there. She was on. You could probably even show an image from the podcast today. Yeah. Um, She was kind of in your camp, Mike, Mm -hmm. where, you know, and it's kind of weird. Diddy's basically saying it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. I'm thinking, hmm, where else have I heard that before? Uh, Your client, Donald Trump. (laughs) Um, We just saw that 77% of people basically think he's guilty. Mm -hmm. 2% of people think he's innocent. The rest are in your camp, innocent to prove it guilty. Speak to that almost from a Population. stoic standpoint, why you shouldn't jump to conclusions. Because you don't know the facts. Mm-hmm. No one knows the facts. The, pro- the, the fact that people are saying guilty without having a identified like, statement mm-hmm. of what's guilty of, what he's guilty of, mm-hmm. that's problematic in itself. So, you know, I can't even have a meaningful conversation with somebody with that premise that they're just saying guilty. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. You got your mind made up. You're emotionally invested into this. Mm-hmm. I'll withdraw myself from that conversation, right? So healthy dialogue is important. Um, and I understand what you're saying in regards to people being concerned with their own lives. That's very important. But, you know, we're here, and this is the show. Absolutely. And this is the topic. And I think it's important to really, like, have some understanding and, and some nuance, right? Because people do think, look, Cassie's a beautiful woman, sweet mm-hmm. looking and all of that, right? But Cassie was participating in freak offs for years, mm-hmm. right? What and about Kim it, Porter? She, what are we talking about? Are we talking about Cassie? What, what did you about, say? Well, I'm saying but no, 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 it, but abusers see, usually have a history of abuse. Let's talk about what we're talking about, though. So that's let's talk about part what of we're his history about. of abuse. Okay. Is his He's saying stay on topic. Kim Porter. Okay, that's You're fine. talking about Cassie. I don't, I don't know much about that, that to be know. honest. I don't, I really don't know. I can't talk to that, right? I'm talking about the Cassie thing, right? So would you I, agree that he was found guilty in a civil suit? I don't, yeah, we but all know that. We all know that. But hold on, hold on. Hold on, so let, me, let me address that, though. As far as the no, civil no, no, no. suit. Let me, let's, let's okay. address each thing as you go along. What does that mean, a civil suit? Um, it means that there was enough probability of it happening that it scared his lawyers into giving Cassie money for it, it before mean, it went to a criminal trial. Scared his lawyers, okay. Because uh, he t- didn't make that decision. I want you guys to all understand that, too. The how do you decision know that? to settle wasn't his decision. How do you know, though? Because when you're a multi-billionaire and you have insurances, like you said, that decision lies with the insurance company, not with him. Is that your world, though? Are you in that space? And you I know-, know a lot of people that okay. are in that space. Right, and I'm when sorry. it's a multi-billion dollar multimedia company that's under fire, there, why do you think the first thing he did was step down from revolt? So that wasn't his so decision. Here's the thing. That was his insurance lawyer's so. decision. All right, so here's the thing. Here's what's problematic with certain discussions. People assert things without knowing, and you're standing on something that you don't know. I do know. So, I've seen okay. the press okay. on it, and just like you all said, right. at the bottom of a civil I'll remove suit, myself it from this part of the conversation because you know a lot insurance. more than me. I think you lost all credibility when you started talking about your own situation. I'm, I mean, you started I'm, talking about your situation and what that brought up inside of you, and then when you started doing that, then that made all logic and fact go out the window. Yeah, but I'm not speaking on an emotional standpoint. I'm no longer speaking on my. On I know, my but situation. that was the first thing I'm you brought up. So therefore, everything after that's irrelevant. Lawsuit where he was found guilty of these allegations, where his lawyers were scared bias. enough for him to go to a criminal court. So we're no longer speaking about me. Just because I interjected my own private experience was to show that it is possible for someone to go through these things and live a cookie cutter lifestyle to everyone else. And I know that from my own experience. What does that say about the person in that position though? What does it say about that person? It says that she was an 18 year old impressionable girl who wanted a career. 18 for how long? Who, it doesn't matter. Okay. It does You're matter. right. She was right. with him for 11 years. Okay. So when she left, she was, what, 28? You're good. You're good. So if she's yeah. in a situation that stunted her mental growth because oh, you got her when she was oh. 18 and you have her in this environment that is only her environment, that's what you that you becomes know, your know Do you know normal. that most of the time they lived together, they didn't live together? He had an apartment in L.A. He lives, he's in New York. She has her own place. You know, they, they weren't together for 11 years, even right? Even though they don't live together, we're talking about a mogul who All can right. travel at the dime, like the drop of a dime. Do you know, she got her ass whooped plenty of times just for going out with her friends. And I know that because I know people that were friends with her at That's that time. You understand? Oh, okay. So Once I'm not physical, speaking yeah. from Listen. an emotional standpoint. Okay. I'm telling you if guys. You know, look, you know facts that I don't. The You have inside information that I don't. So I'm not, I can't. 
properly like entangled with you on this topic. You know way more than me. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving my, my I breakdown. I wouldn't say that. I've just done the research in order to you be said able to you state know. this. Mm -hmm. You said you know. I've done the research. Okay. I think, I think at the Where do you end research these things at? I'm sorry? Where do you research these things at? Where do I research these things yeah. at? Uh, in the court indictment. Um, so you researched both the court, court indictment. Yeah, I did. I read the Cassie indictment. What, what made you read extent. the Cassie indictment? Why? Do because the research. I wanted to know. Because I can guarantee you 99% of people are no, not right. reading. Yeah. The because court I wanted brief. to know mm -hmm. if okay. she was lying or not. Gotcha. But so a, what did the settlement mm -hmm. reveal? But wait, wait. To Real me, quick, Adam. About the indictment. Right. So I know the indictment looked horrible, right? Right. Well, okay. we're talking about the Cassie indictment or we're talking about the indictment, indictment right now? All indictments look bad. Mm -hmm. You know what an indi indictment is? I do. So there's no input from the defense at all. At all. But it's I only also to make point. this person look bad. Gotcha. You're absolutely right. right. Great I also point, know, Mike. though, in order for them to indict someone and to raid your homes in two different states, the judge has to be some has to see some pretty significant evidence okay, let me, to to tell you yes let me there's give a you suspicion just a of this a little on. bit of nuance a judge isn't going to just sign indictments. off on an indictment and just be like yeah raid all his stuff just because you guys say so i'll give you a little bit of indictment let me part give of it you a too. little bit of nuance to indictments from personal experience right so there was once upon a time that i had a really big criminal case against me right okay. there was an indictment the whole nine right it was self-defense, essentially, and essentially, I got off. I, won I beat it, right? But the indictment, they want an indictment, so they had to stack everything so crazy. So it was a, a home intruder, a home invader, and I protected my household, my children, myself, and my girl. Every bullet that was fired was put on my indictment as a... Uh, a crime against my children. Understand. Right? It's a crime assault. against your children? Yeah, yeah there's kids in the house. Against my kids. As if I yeah. was... Look, as if, if you're going to shoot if you, your own if kids. You, if, you, if you were to read the indictment, yeah. it's like I'm shooting my kids. Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. Right? So indictments are one-sided. They always look horrible, mm -hmm. right? Look, I'm not saying Diddy is an angel, right? right? But when we're talking about if somebody's, you know, graping people and things of that nature. Right. I'm not talking about how nice he was, if he was a narcissist. I don't care about any of that, right? right. But when you're like about to try to take a man's life away mm -hmm. with that, like, it's like, we gotta, let's really identify what happened and let's right. get some proof on the table because just saying somebody did it because this girl is nice and she's sweet and she's innocent. That's not that, why I'm That holds no it. weight for me. That's right? not why I'm because saying Because here's, here's another thing that no one's really talking about. She's in a situation that she's hoping for some kind of exchange, right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? She, she, she I was, wouldn't say so. If you look at, I read the indictment, right? That, that one, only because everybody was talking about it on, on mm -hmm. social media. She was hoping to get uh, all of these records put out. She signed a 10 album deal, I believe it was, mm -hmm. with him. All of this was in hopes of becoming a star, mm -hmm. right? So there was things that she wanted out of this too. And there was things that she actually got out of this too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excuse me. So, you know, it's just like the guy, the rich guy is always the bad guy. The rich, no, powerful no. guy See, who got it, guys, he got well, it made, Dina, he's always Dina, the bad Dina, guy. Dina, one sec. Okay. By the way, great point about the indictments. Mm -hmm. I would say the majority, like I almost went to law school. Thank God I didn't, got the finance, <laughs> media. This shit ain't for me. What a point. The indict, did you guys even know how the indictment stuff worked? And he goes, yeah. yeah. You did? Yeah. I guess these guys are all attorneys out uh, here. I, I, I didn't. I didn't know. Good to know. We're learning. We're learning here. Okay. I guess we're, we're, we got. <laughs> is, we got the smartest girls on these shows. No, group. I didn't no, say anything. What a know. point. Thank you. And just to kind of wrap this segment up, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. right. These allegations that we're going to go through them, pretty freaking wild. Um, Can I make one more comment on that too? Yeah, right? go ahead. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty fascinating. So just as I called you out for for the emotional experience associated with your own life experiences, there's also the opposite end on this side, right? right? So both of you are the most passionate people talking about both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And he had a personal experience that was relatively similar. Right. And you also had an experience that was relatively similar. Right. So we have to be aware of our biases as people exactly. when we're making decisions for what we think is right and not. So really at the end of the day, the court will decide 
and uh, we have to be aware of our own biases. No, I definitely agree with you guys, and I don't want to make it seem like, oh, like I'm on this witch hunt for like mm -hmm. this black mm -hmm. billionaire. I love black men. That's actually my preference. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's not even that's like, what's going on. on that. It's not sort even like, on that type of you know, tip. Like, it's just love. when you read certain documents and you think of it, right? And you think of the extent that they had to go through to execute these raids on separate sides of the spectrum. That, Hold on a second. They okay. actually got Miami Beach PD to stop drinking coladas and eating croquetas for 15 minutes. Okay. That's and a big deal if you're not from Miami. That is a big And gas up the steeple and head over to Diddy's house. Yeah. So in order for them to go through <laughs> these right. great lengths, this is my point. I'm not saying he's guilty of all the allegations. This is your observation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Your perspective. So I'm not saying he's guilty of everything either. I'm not saying that. My mm. thing is, is that where there's smoke, there's fire. You mm. understand? So okay. if, yeah. if well, Dina, they took the time. Final word, and we're going to the next topic. All right. Wrap you, it up. You think that it's a lot to get them to go and raid someone's house. It's not. It's very easy. There's YouTubers that get squatted or swatted all the time. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. We're talking yep. about a so squat, yep. We're not talking about a, a bi-coastal raid. A SWAT, a SWAT, that's major. Mm -hmm. You know how much money that costs the state? Yep. To send a to deploy I a SWAT totally team. I totally get that. That's a military operation. I get that. No, but to you do don't. it bicoastally? You don't. To Not, do it bicoastally yeah, at the same high time? Profile, a high profile target like Sean Diddy Combs, they're going to break the bank on that because whoever, just like whoever's going after Trump, the lady in Atlanta, this is going to be huge for her career. And we cannot act like that This is, that doesn't matter. It does. Yep. It does. Right? You're right. So, so because he, he, these district attorneys, their, their ultimate job is to get as many convictions as possible. If they get a big name, books, interviews, their life changes. Mm -hmm. Just like in social media, somebody have a viral moment, they're set, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to get money, you know? Mm -hmm. And for those people in that world, that's how you get it. I took down Sean Diddy Combs. Yep. Mm -hmm. By the way, everybody trying to get money, Diddy's possibly best song ever, yeah. all about the Benjamins, baby. <laughs> Boom. Um, Malik. Um, I, I totally appreciate the conversation we just had and the rush to judgment. I totally appreciate sort of like the cognitive bias. Well, you know, the, there's experiences going on. Um, I will say in social media out there, the memes are flying. Sure. The memes are flying. They are. The interviews, people who have bias, relationships, trying to get the bag, trying to capitalize on this momentum. Mm -hmm. People are talking, birds are singing. You got the picture of what? I guess Diddy looks like right now. That's what's going on in the oh, internet Lord. right now. They're Damn. talking about yeah, OJ? Diddy That's Epstein. Epstein. That's Epstein. Okay. <laughs> Epstein. But this is the type of thing that people. Did you find that Miami Herald article? Miami Herald, <laughs> probably the most <laughs> reputable newspaper here in Miami. Of that, yeah. If allegations are true. Diddy's case, Diddy's case shows the pattern of another abusive power for man. There was another opinion. Yeah, opinion. There was another article called. Is Diddy the black Epstein? Is Diddy another South Florida girl? Wow. So they're making this comparison That's wild. easy to do, which I understand you're like, <clears throat> but this is the times we live in. But here's what I'll tell you. Um, you're gonna pull up this interview in a second, mm -hmm. or these clips from this guy, Reggie White. Reggie Wright, and we're gonna talk about, maybe, did he have any bias here? Great point. Um, by the way, in this suit that they're talking about, here's some of the names that were mentioned there are going to be more. Um, I assume if this gets as big as it will, every rapper who was part of Bad Boy, you know, Mace is going to be back in the house. Um, Junior Mafia is going to be there. Death Row Records, everything was Suge Knight. You know, Tupac, rest in peace. I don't know, that's not happening. Um, Snoop, Dre. Be, but here are the names that have already been mentioned. I said those are names that could potentially be Prince Harry. Oh, wait, yeah. what? All right. Um, Bishop T.D. Jakes, yep. one of the biggest um, Preachers. people in the um, religious world out there. Uh, no way. Cassie, obviously we talked about her. Cuba Gooding Jr., mm. who I can tell you, wow. Cuba, shout out to you. See him everywhere in South Beach. Yeah. That guy's everywhere. <laughs> um, young Miami, I guess he dated her. That's his girl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. dated. All right. Still. I'm not keeping up with what he's, I'm not, I'm barely keeping up with the Kardashians, much less the Combs, speaking of the Combs, uh, his sons were arrested, specifically Justin Combs. They've been named in the suit. Um, a lot of stuff is going to play out. Mm. But there's this guy out here, 
Reggie Wright, that basically predicted this. This guy's been saying that everything that is happening right now was about to happen. Now, by the way, like with the Epstein situation, since they're making the analogy in the papers, there were for years and years and years yeah. of Rumors. evidence. Yeah. Look, I didn't hear about this Diddy stuff until like a few months ago, mm -hmm. straight up. Yeah. And I live in Miami. I've been to these parties. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. When's the first time you guys actually started hearing this stuff about Diddy? Um, probably a couple months ago as well. Okay. Yeah. Jane? I think Candace Owens. I, I don't know. It's just it's always been something with like Diddy for a minute. Yeah. It's so like, always? Like bad news, yeah, Diddy. Like it's always bad news. I think anybody. But, going how far back? Oh. Um, I don't know. I would say like maybe a year or two yeah. years. Okay, so not yeah. always. I'm talking 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, it's only been recent, a few months. Recent. Flo? Yeah, recently when the um, Bishop T.D. Jakes video appeared. Oh, yeah. That's kind of... That's what? when I when found was that? out about it. A few months ago. What I was the T.D. Jakes video? Oh, that, that they slept together. They w that he was accused of, like, right. that's internet, homosexuality like, yeah. with yeah. a pastor. Okay. So, obviously, that baby. title alone mm -hmm. calls now, I'm for not, a I'm not a lawyer. Standpoint. Not a lawyer. You guys are lawyers. Mm -hmm. I'm Is also homosexuality <laughs> illegal these days? No. no oh, no, I didn't no. know that. That's no, no. I'm bad, saying... Guys. It is no, in some no, people's no. houses. It is in some people's houses. No, it was a scandal. When's the first saying... time you heard about um, Diddy? Honest? Um... Years, yeah. but that's years? because my on perspective yeah, is very different. Bad it's always something. I remember I used to do okay. music videos. I've been in the entertainment was world. That guy now, like by the way, so just my perspective like, is very different. Flo, real quick, <laughs> what was the TD Jake story beyond potential sexual groping little boys? TD Jake's. I don't know. Alleged, allegedly. Hold on. Are you together. telling me? No, yeah, it was all that over the internet. people affiliated with the church would touch little boys. What are you saying? I don't believe that. I don't believe that Listen. part, though. Fabrication, Listen, fake news. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you, when you see some but, of these celebrity yeah. things come out, they don't shock me because I feel like sometimes these people get to a level where they have so much of everything. It's like, what next is going to get me, like, yeah. like in a adrenaline? Rise, you know, like, like you got millions of dollars. Yeah. You have access right. to millions of women. Yeah. You have access to millions of men and businesses. It's like, I feel like sometimes these people go to a point of, like, what else is going to, like, give right. me something, right. you know? Like, they have access to all these drugs, all these parties, everything's mm -hmm. big, extravagant. It's like, when you see them come to a point, like, mm. I, I see so many big mm. name people, they, you know, I get in trouble for the graping and this, and it's like, what more right. is gonna get them to, to, to go, you know? Yeah. Diddy somebody, yeah. Yeah. throughout years, I've also heard this, on not and too off. good, the rumors are come, they'll go but away, But mind you, but back, mind you, as somebody on the outside, when you yeah. see these things, constantly happening you have to also consider yeah. as a receiver if someone in that industry is reaching out to you you know some stuff is going on in there period point Ooh. blank where that's a celebrity well that's an athlete what that you always have to have in your sense like you can never really trust anybody right until that time comes so this yeah. whole thing is like i didn't know he was gonna you know fly me out and, and make me have sex yeah. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. you did you know yeah, he was right. trying to bring you and you I feel like to bring your friend too like three sides to everyone know, you know there's, there's the side they show to the world there's a side a that maybe your friends percent. and family see and then there's really you a thousand percent but you know it's like you saying? see I always, my thing is innocent until proven guilty whether I like you yeah. whether I want you to be guilty whether or not I don't want yeah. you to be disciplined for something you didn't do but I also want justice to be served oh, for sure. if 100%. something is bad happening mm -hmm. and we all know mm -hmm. about it and there's facts about it yeah. lock their ass but up also, and put them where they belong but also because that's different than oh you know I didn't know he was gonna fly me out and pay my bills and uh -huh. then wanted to have sex with me <laughs> yes you did a hundred percent and I, I do I did. do have to agree with that because you know everything is about the position you're putting yourself in right so it's like if you're a woman and someone's uh, the guy's like oh I'll fly you out and he's all this stuff whatever how are you gonna tell me or how are you gonna say oh all of a sudden he forced me to have sex with him and that is like mm -hmm. Are you? You have to be you like literally. He flew me yeah, on his private know. jet to yeah, you have his to know. place. Pay my rent. Yeah, pay yeah. my rent. Just to be friends. Are you expecting? And now she's on his allegations. No. Yes. Um, but we're gonna play this video um, of Reggie Wright uh, basically predicting Diddy's downfall. Here's mm -hmm. the man who predicted it. Go ahead. By the way, he's the former. This is kind of to you, Cam. Hold on, hold on. The former general manager of Death Row Records. A little wow. biased, probably. Um, this dates bit. back a few months, <laughs> but he called it. Roll the tape. See if you can do it on one, two, five. Or some of Puffy properties be getting raided real soon. Turn it up, please. 
They need to get to those tapes. They get one of those tapes with him with those little people that have been making the accusations. Mm. Woo, man. <laughs> Done. <laughs> but Puffy the type here, he'll blow his brains out. Guarantee y'all. Turn it up. Or do like he did on that, that court screw uh, uh, lie. How he did. The next thing that's going to be happening, and uh, after this is now, you're going to start seeing some criminal investigations getting opened. Damn. And uh, because when you get too much of this smoke, uh, law enforcement generally gets involved. Mm -hmm. So that would be the next thing that will be happening to, to Puffy, unfortunately. For his sake, y'all know, I'm one that believes if you ain't getting psychological help, getting some type of help, and you're a victim, you got to come right away with me mm. and tell it. That's what's happening to your boy Puff, P. Diddy, Damn. brother love and all of that. But don't act like y'all just starting to hear. Because I've been telling y'all, the brother is a homosexual. And he's fighting it, trying to hide it. And he needed to just come clean. Yeah. How? It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. He hasn't been rated yet. Trust Reggie motherfucking right. They coming. They talk about the... The, the, the secret tapes and the secret cameras and all of that, too much, too much for the police, for a law enforcement official to convince a DA and a judge to issue a warrant to at least go for a fishing expedition, to go hunting, to go looking for something. Hopefully, Diddy is smart enough to call up his good friend Russell and say, hey, Russell, I got these tapes, because you know, it's one thing about pedophiles and murderers and stuff like that, they do not like getting rid of the evidence. They hold Ooh. on to that shit like crazy. How many times y'all heard somebody get, like, damn, how the f they still got the gun? <laughs> that gun would have been in the ocean here, there, you know. How they hold, could they hold on to their tapes? That's what, that's why they do it. So they need it. And law enforcement know this. Like I'm always saying, and you too, John, ready to be lying, ready to making up shit. But if y'all go and listen to my videos before, y'all see I done spoke on all this bullshit before. Been telling y'all, oh, Puffy Combs is a fucking homosexual. Wild allegations. Um, we're going to process this all right now. By the way, give a little uh, context of who he is exactly. So he's known for the um, Sharad show, uh, Murad Rap Inside Biggie and Two Bucks Murders, and Death Row Chronicles. Okay, so he is... Someone who would be in the know. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. The last. Death Row Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the Shiraz. So he's a he's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. All right, this is IMB, IMDb. Mm -hmm. He probably has something down in a pipeline, mm -hmm. a show mm -hmm. or something around this, mm -hmm. right? Do y'all really want to sit and listen to a grown man that's supposed to be a gangster gossiping about another man's downfall? Like, watch. They ain't did it yet, but watch. Yeah, no. he sounds it's like interesting. Did, Great did, point. Did, did, Nobody gave song. two shits about this yeah. until now. Yeah. And what he's saying, like, okay, he keeps saying he's a homosexual. Okay, so wrong it's, with not illegal. it's not illegal. Right. He keeps saying this, like, all right. So now when the lawsuit came out, right, it was crazy, right? No shit. <laughs> there's gonna be an investigation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's gonna open. People are like scouring for something, right? DAs don't give a fuck about justice. They give a fuck about convictions. This is like an easy target. And there's a lot of people that can make money from this whole mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. He's wounded, let's get him, right? Anybody can predict that. It's just that everybody's not sitting here gossiping about what's about to happen to this man. Happy about his downfall, right? And this is an enemy of his. Like we gotta right. be, I mean, be right. mindful well, of that. that. Right. That was exactly where yeah. I was gonna go with the bias yeah. they can, because mm -hmm. if this guy's affiliated with Death Row Records, some of you guys are too young to remember. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna kinda take us back down memory lane here. Uh -oh. The 90s, arguably, was the best time we've had yes, as a sir. country it was. in forever. I miss okay? That. You know, in the, in the 90s, here's why, by the way. Communism just ended. You know, the wall came down. This is pre-9-11, so there was Economy no war was on great. terrorism. There was no 9-11. There was no foreign wars. It wasn't uh, clashes of cultures, clashes of civilizations. The Democrats and the Republicans kind of got along up until about 2000 yeah. with the Bush-Gore election. Mm -hmm. Politics has always been contentious. Now it's some of the worst times ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue in the 90s, in my opinion, was East Coast versus West Coast rap. <laughs> Mm. Is it Biggie or is it Tupac? And what happened is both ended up dead. Mm. 
And Suge Knight is still there, in and out of jail, from Death Row Records. You know, Dre, Snoop, those guys were obviously did their thing. Um, Puffy did his thing. Uh, the dust has settled. Um, but people forget how contentious and insane mm -hmm. it was. So when Mike Rashid says, yeah, but that's his enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how much still of that beef carries on 30 years later. But what's your assumption? It's, it's still heavy. I mean, they talk about it. Suge Knight hates Diddy, right? Is you know, I ain't gonna say a lot of things, but it's it's that's when you dealing with street elements that never dies until everybody's dead. Mm -hmm. It's retaliation for life. Like it's no, we're not getting over it, right? So mm -hmm. that's just that's their thing. It's just weird that this guy is a gangster on on saying these things, right? Allegedly a gangster. Tough well, that's guy. the times we live in. I can't yeah. tell you how many mafia guys, that's the wild. top mafia yeah. guys in the world are no longer racketeering. <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael Francis, I love you. He's the man. Sammy the Bull, we've sat down with this guy. This guy's this big. Never been more scared in my life. Yeah. Uh, they got podcasts now. Wow. That's the reality of where we're at now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So life is just all entertainment. <laughs> Back to what my man said, focus on your life. <laughs> <laughs> focus on your life. Here's another thing we got to yes, consider. Sir. These are extremely rich people in these weird worlds. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are worlds that a lot of us will never have to interact with, mm -hmm. right? And everything in their world is elevated and strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything. Well, but what, wanna, is that, what is that fine like line of agree. elevated and strange and like inappropriate and illegal? And Where corrupt. do you meet Look, that Look, I'm sure there's line. a lot of that, that too. A lot mm -hmm. of inappropriate, a lot of illegal things. Mm -hmm. But that's not us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not us, you know when you still, find it's out? Still, it's not I, I us, do but you also yeah. have to consider people still somehow end up in that world even if they're not the main character. Now, okay. You know when you find out? When the cops still bust down your door. Mm -hmm. That's when you find out if it's just weird and strange or if it's illegal. Yeah, but Let me life. ask Amy a question. Because right. some people have said this. And I'm, it, I, it, maybe I'm just not that smart. Maybe I don't go down, like going down rabbit holes. You said something at the beginning, and multiple people have said this. You said something to the effect of, well, did, did he really do this? Or is he sort of the fall guy for someone above him? Right? And I'm thinking, what's he, who's he taking the fall? Who's above, what? Break that down for me. Uh, it's just, it's something that I've seen online as well. So since you knew a little bit about the situation. I well, just, if you saw look, it online, I I threw it, out, saw it, online, no, no, it has no, no, to no. be true. I mean, I think it's good to question these things. Anytime I see like a mainstream narrative being like pushed, like way harder mm -hmm. than average, you know, I think it's good to kind of poke some holes and ask some questions. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that popped up. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time in history where something like that's happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just. I, I got a high degree of skepticism for anything mainstream that's being pushed out there. 100%. I mean, we could all talk about the COVID shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we won't. Sure. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But we what, I'm this saying, but what, what I'm saying is we... He's talking about taking <laughs> right, right. Shots, 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 shots. Playing basketball out here. <laughs> Playing basketball out here, yo. But, but I don't trust nothing that they say. 100%. Usually I go the opposite way. Observe mm -hmm. the masses, do they, the opposite. They do 100%. say mm -hmm. only the paranoid survive. But at the same time, <laughs> The future looks bright. You kind of got to watch your front and your back at the same time. Always. Totally condone that. But uh, be a crazy psychopath for one second. <laughs> Dream with me. What is this thing you're talking, this shadowy web of characters who's pulling the strings and Diddy's the fall guy? <laughs> Make something up. Don't say I don't know. Because you said something. Go. I mean, we've all heard for a very long time and it can border and teeter on, you know, conspiratorial, but there's a lot of stuff going on with the rich and powerful who, like you said, are pulling the strings. Absolute power can corrupt absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in times like that, you know, some very sickening things happen. I agree with what you said, that there's a, a fine line between just weird and, and, and strange and things that people probably couldn't comprehend, but mm -hmm. there's a, a very fine line between that and, sex trafficking mm -hmm. and abusing children. And unfortunately, that, uh, you know, P word, I don't know if we can say that without the episode being taken down. Yeah, well, um, then don't say it, Amy. Listen, but they exist yeah. everywhere. They yeah. exist in media, yes. they exist in government, mm -hmm. they exist in police, they exist in literally every single institution in the world, and they all have each other's backs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the second you try to, like, look into this stuff more, you'll see how sick and how actually, mm -hmm. like, yeah. common it is in everyday uh, life. But uh, again, so, you know, when something like this happens, it's worth 
you know, going forward a couple of lines of questioning deeper to see if you can get to the bottom. By the way, fully agree with you guys. You can't just believe what you see in the headlines. Yeah. You know, if you did, that's why so many people, yeah, Andrew Tate is a sex trafficker. It's like, I've been to this dude's house. <laughs> I've interviewed the guy for 10 hours. Like, I'm not defending, I'm just, I'm not buying it. Yeah, but they also And you have to, by the way, they did him. the same thing to Trump. Mm -hmm. And many people felt guilty. Um, they find people on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when you actually go back and roll the tape, um, you know, Walls are racist, you know? We need to build a wall. How do we, we build a walls are racist? Uh, have you seen the southern border lately? Mm -hmm. Walls look pretty freaking unracist at this yeah. kind of safety systems. Mm -hmm. So, weird stuff that's going on there. Malik, did you have any strong opinions on this situation when you saw that video from that guy? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think one thing to add, like another hole to the story is like the fact that, uh, Last year, Diddy got into a lawsuit with a very rich and powerful company. Diageo. Like, uh, with this yeah. all... With, with this this is Diageo. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And um, like... Diageo and Southern Brands, if you know anything about the liquor business, are mm -hmm. massive. Mm -hmm. They're based out of here Huge. in South Florida. Know them well. Um, obviously, being in the nightlife scene for years, that's where you get the liquor. He owns Ciroc. I think he had to... De Leon, too. De, De Leon Ciroc as well. De Tequila. Leon. Yeah. Um... So where are you going with this, Malik? Yeah, well, uh, most of the time, like, when you get into, like, any legal trouble or any type of uh, altercation with something, like, like, an entity way more powerful than you, that entity would do everything in its power to stronghold you and scare you and deter you from mm -hmm. actually pursuing any type of action against them. So, like, mm -hmm. you hear it all the time about these corrupt officials. You even see it in, like, in government issues where people are, like, they got one up on the government, then next thing you know, that person is suddenly unalive or they disappear. You know, so like that's one thing you have to think about. Maybe this powerful billion dollar liquor company is probably got some pools somewhere in the streets or wherever to get all of this, all these allegations on Diddy. Mm. Pretty well. Yeah. By the way, when you saw all those videos from that guy, um, Reggie Wright, did this change your opinion for the worse, for the better, especially when uh, he's like, look, he's an enemy of his. Anyone have strong feelings of what you just saw? I don't Daya? believe anything he says. You don't believe anything he said? I don't. Zero. No. Flo? I think he's just a hater. Flo, do you believe what that guy said really. at all? I mean... He, he called the shot. He Babe Ruth this thing. He Babe Ruth did all he wanted to, but at the end of the day, his bias also makes him untrustworthy. That's Kia right there. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a great point that yeah. maybe he does have something coming along the lines where he does have something that will promote it and then, oh, you see, I told you so, buy my book or hey, check out this story or hey, check yeah. out this film. If he would have ended end it with day, buy my book, that would have been a dead giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> Daya? Right. Um, well, I'm not sure like what your question is. All I can observe is that he's saying that something's going to happen because all of what was being said. Yeah. So if there's so much that's being said, I think he's just stating the obvious, they're gonna come for him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, he wasn't just like, look guys, here's my prediction. Yeah. yeah. He was, boom, well, maybe, two weeks later, boom, two weeks later, boom. He was probably so, part of the process. Yeah. Like, so you think he's an informant? It could be. By the way, shout out to you and your legal skills. Mm. It's exactly <laughs> what Trump's lawyer Alina Haba had to say. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I should have been I a lawyer. I was like, oh, maybe you are a good lawyer. <laughs> um, Kian, final word right here on this overall topic, especially that video, speaking of bias. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> well <don't> spoken. <laughs> sure, <That's> quick. <laughs> right, hold on, but I, I want to say something else, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's absolutely embarrassing that people like to think that because someone has a certain level of power or authority or money that they're going to somehow show up in a kind, loving way, or to think that they don't have their own demons, or to think that they don't have their own personal interests at heart. So whether that's the Pope, or whether that's a famous athlete, or whether it's Diddy, it's like, don't be so naive as someone consuming information from someone that's seen as a public figure, mm -hmm. to think that they're not capable of anything. We're all right. capable of anything at any yeah. time. So to put your faith in man, or someone of that stature at all, whether it's the Pope or it's Diddy, to me is pathetic. Well, the famous quote, you're absolutely right, by the way, is. Um, money reveals character. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you're a piece of shit and you get money, you're going to be a rich piece of shit. Yeah. Right. If you're an amazing person and you get money, you're going to be an amazing person with money and you're going to give to philanthropy. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't make you who you are. It reveals, it reveals who you who are. You are. Right. So totally agree with you on that one. Um, moving right along. 
There's actually some creepy videos we're about to show right now. Uh, um, I want facts. I want to see well, the facts. Well, here are some first-hand stories of people that have lived mm. with Diddy. Mm. And let me know if you've ever heard these names, recognized these names. Um, Usher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he performed at that little game that was being played. <laughs> the game. Super Bowl. Yeah, for free, gotcha. remember? The free, for free, for free. Remember? For free. Okay. <laughs> We're going to show that. We're going to show that video. A charitable young man. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I've never, is this, is this some like new up and coming artist? What's this guy's name? Justin Bieber. Oh, Justin oh. Bieber. Gotcha. Never heard so of he's, him. he's a guy. Gotcha. Here's some videos of a usher recently talking about him being a teenager living with Diddy in quote unquote puffy flavor camp. This isn't that old though. This is like the last is, two yeah. years, something it's, like that. Uh, about five, six years ago, apparently, maybe seven years ago. But he's grown up. Right. And um, now we're gonna show you a video, a video of Bieber um, with Diddy at 15 years old. So teenagers living oh. with Diddy. This is nothing. We're not accusing anything. Mm-hmm. We're just saying it's a little creepy. Mm-hmm. Let's start with the Usher one on 1.25. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's Camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh-huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh-huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man, Faith Evans, Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. Yeah. I actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> And what, <laughs> do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I had like, you know, what like a, a living. Life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> See? Wow. Okay. Uh, turn up the volume just a little bit for the second video. Um, Puffy Very Flavor suspicious. Camp. Okay. Now, here's what I'll say. Because I'm. Flavor Camp. Nobody knows more 90s hip hop than me. Yeah. One of the baddest songs back in the day was a dude by Craig Mack. Return At that party, kicking flavor in your ear. Oh. Okay? <laughs> huh? I'm kicking new, I'm kickin new flavor in your, in your, flavor your, in your ear. Card. Got some no styles <laughs> that you're trying to hear. You know Craig Mack yeah, yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. Um, so, Puffy Flavor Camp, Usher, 13. You know, I'm sure these girls were, I didn't say that. Mm. Would you let your kids go? Hell no. Mm. Okay. That is not a conducive statement. Good. Yeah, I'm just I'm saying we're not, there's not little charges there. It's just Usher telling the story. Right. Then we got the dude Justin Bieber, mm. a young Biebs with the original hairdo, oh, the comb over vibe. Oh this is Diddy actually speaking with Bieber. See if you can make it bigger. They're having the times of their lives, like like like, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when, you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, He's with me, so, um, yeah. Oh, Damn, why they do that? Yeah, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. Oh, crazy. <laughs> That's That's me That's and this 15-year-old <laughs> kid wild. is here for the best 48 hours of his life. Oh, so wild. And we about to go buck wild crazy. Wild. Totally comfortable with that. <laughs> no. So we were talking on the PBD podcast. What kind of parent does that? I said, well, look at them now. Justin Bieber, arguably one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah. Usher, one of the biggest stars in the world. Resurgent career. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl, Vegas, possibly was worth 
going to Diddy's house. Diddy, allegedly, one of the worst world, words you can ever, ever attach to your name is allegedly. Nothing good ever happens after allegedly. Allegedly, if he's a homeless, no. Um, and we all know the biggest star in the 80s and 90s was Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. yep. Parents were dropping off kids at mm. Neverland Ranch. We all know the allegations with that. So you said something like, when there's smoke, there's fire. By the way, none of this is convincing of guilt. Mm -hmm. um, weird or not weird, ladies? Uh, that shit's weird. Okay, so you made the Michael Jackson <laughs> comparison. I'm sorry. Weird just, or not weird, those videos? Strange. Very strange. AKA weird. weird. Strange. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Super strange. Flo? I think I need more context in order to... Okay. You need to be at the house with Justin no, Bieber to no. see what's going like. What do you mean? I, not Justin's really. Smile. I just... I mean, for example, Justin Justin, Bieber, Justin's reaction of 48 hours, okay, I can see how yeah. that can cause some... Hmm, that's strange. Why did he freak out? But for the other one, like... Sh how um, many of you guys got kids? Not yet. How old is your kid? 15. 15. Uh, you, you have a son or a daughter? Daughter. Daughter. Okay. Um, what does she want to be when she grows up? Uh, right now, um, she wants to either be a lawyer or play volleyball for a little while. That's her thing. So. Okay. Um, pick a lawyer. Pick a volleyball player. Pick anything oh, no, she I wants know, to do. I know what the question is going to be. Would I let my kid do just it? Just let your daughter, oh, no. kid, stay at, whether they're the most famous person in the world, whether they're a great person, stay at someone's house for 48 hours without you. Hell no, not if I a can't grown stay man. with them. Hell no. Mm -mm. Why not? No, there's no way. This what do you mean? They're going to make it. It's going to help their career. What do you mean? No, Listen. Okay, we're going How together. Could you be sure? yes, we're, we're all going to go. When I started over, over all together, you're you know what I'm saying? A, a, it doesn't matter. There's still kids. Okay. Okay. Also, even if I had a son. But even if I had a son, I would feel the same And if your son or your daughter has an opportunity to change the family's legacy, life. Which they did. Which, okay. But they have the opportunity. This could be the person that opens that door for them, you know. And the, as a parent, Which you're thinking, door? I get Which that. Door? Of maybe this is a new life. The maybe back door. Maybe this is Go success. To the shower. Totally. totally. Get that. <laughs> but my point you're is, you're talking about a life-changing event. For sure. I, but for my everyone, point is, as a you legacy. also want to consider as a parent, maybe these people don't come from this stuff. They're thinking, oh, maybe this is an opportunity. I'm going to trust them with my son to guide That's them to success too. because they're successful. There's right. also a different time that they entered into that yeah. do you think today parents are gonna be like yeah just go ahead like just call me facetime me when you're there yeah. like yeah. that didn't happen uh, i think then. they would but, yeah, yeah. Well, my they day, when i started event. modeling yeah. at 13 13 I, just because i was tall and developed did not make me a woman i was 13 years a old thousand percent. Mm -hmm. every single casting every opportunity whether it was local out of state or out of the country mm -hmm. my mom would not let me go if she was not there but what about now but now I'm 25. Well, it doesn't. These I've things learned. happen. No, 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 no. She's 25. She makes her own decisions. Mm -hmm. well, this I'm is strictly an 18 and under thing. My mom was with me in yeah. every moment because that protected me from God knows what. When you're 13, you're naive. You might percent. be seeing things that look maybe not so weird, but yeah. you don't know what's going on, or a you can turn the blind percent. eye because you're a little kid. Creepy or uh, weird? You can make a decision weird? for yourself Normal? when you're What would you do if I'm you're a kid? I'm more inclined to agree with Nat, and I, I, especially the first thing you said, which I'm not sure if everyone uh, got that because there was a little bit of chatter. It really is different from a guy to a girl. Like, if I had a daughter, I feel like in, intuitively, instinctively, you're so much more protective over her. Of course. Uh, versus a son, versus a, a, a boy. So, I mean, yeah, clearly the opportunity cost, that is a cost benefit analysis that they weighed and they mm -hmm. said hey let's do it and you know i don't judge them for it yeah, but like, even if you see yeah. justin bieber's journey you saw his journey publicly you mm -hmm. see that he changed mm -hmm. justin bieber is not the baby that he's not that that little kid anymore yeah well that's so, you know what that's called growing up growing up yeah but he <laughs> went through a public like he was on drugs yeah. mm -hmm. he had this whole episode he was he changed he went from this dreamy pop star boy that's mm. oh my gosh so happy so handsome to yeah i'm silent you know i'm not trying to be in the light and but phenomenal artist mm -hmm. he's had such a story but that's the thing is like when you enter a world like that you don't know really what that world looks mm -hmm. like until you're there mm -hmm. that's true i do want to say something about yeah. that um because I find fault in two sides, on both sides. Mm -hmm. First of all, P. Diddy, you saw what Usher said. It's clear that this was immoral activity that was happening that a 13-year-old should not be seeing. So he was not, he, 
he was not acting in good character to have a child in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. You should protect children, and he obviously yeah. did not. That's clear. Now, the parent, though, should not have allowed their, chil their child to just go. But in the mind of a parent, or probably they were thinking, this is a big opportunity. This could change our lives. So it's almost like sacrificing your kid. And I'm, it, I'm using yeah. that as an ex extreme, but it's, in a sense, it's like, well, I'm going to go do this because mm -hmm. it's going to help all of us. Mm -hmm. So you have to, call, you have to um, weigh the cost. Yeah. Everything. Always a lot costs. of these celebrities do things that are immoral to get to a certain position. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you want to do, do it. But with it might come sorrow. With it might come the drama. What P. Diddy's like you reap what you sow. So right now he has sown a lot of uh, bad threads, bad stuff, like mm -hmm. a lot of bad fruit, um, a, a lot of bad seeds because he's engaged in a lot of crazy activity so now look at what he's reaping right so i think like you can choose what how you want to get money how you want to become Ooh, famous it's your choice but there will be consequences for what you choose mm -hmm. great point and, and let's just give some context here you're 13 you're 15 you're not a baby you're not a six-year-old you're not an eight-year-old you're going there a because you're fucking talented it's not like, hey, Diddy, Flavor, Saver, Camp, all the 13-year-olds. Like, no, we got a problem here, bro. One kid that was identified, Usher, in the 90s probably, right? 80s, 90s. All right, cool, let's bring this guy in. He's Bieber, all right, boom, boom, boom. It's a business opportunity. The Michael Jackson thing? I don't know, how old were these kids? Nine to 14. Okay, they were kids, and they weren't singing. It's a whole nother level of weirdness. Right. Hold on, and, hold on, you know, there's nuance to that, too. Yep. Well, yeah. I want to get you, this okay. one's coming right to you. All right. You have kids. Yes. How old are your kids? My son, 18. My daughter under him, 17. And okay. then my youngest is eight. Daughter. Gotcha. Let's focus on your daughters for a second, mm -hmm. respectfully. Um, what are your, your, your 17 year old daughter, what does she want to do? She's a creative and she loves uh, programming and artificial intelligence nice. and all of that stuff. Okay. Something in that space. Gotcha. Yeah. So in We're this hiding. case, it might not be Diddy. It might be Sam Altman that owns um, OpenAI or Elon Musk that owns so the freaking world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the chances that you're letting your 13-year-old daughter, 17-year-old daughter have 48 hours alone at their, those guys' houses? That's not going to happen. Not going to happen? Mm -mm. No. Why not? I just don't play that shit. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think everything starts at home and right. with the father and his his protection over his children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna stifle potential opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. We'll go, we'll go, mm -hmm. we'll or, go. Or my your uncle, my brother yeah. is going. Mm -hmm. We're we're gonna be there. So yeah. it's it's cool. Yeah. Let's go. If everything's gonna up and up, it's no problem. Like mm -hmm. of course, that's the obvious answer. Yeah. We'll go. But see, I'm also yeah. this person because people can say they won't let their child do this or do that, mm -hmm. but. I'm also not a fan of public schools, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. You're giving your precious little beautiful child away yeah. to strangers, people who, who you've done no background check on. You don't mm -hmm. know anything about these teachers. Mm -hmm. You don't know nothing about these kids and their parents, right? Mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the most meaningful uh, hours of the day, mm -hmm. the most important hours of the day, for five days a week, every week, every year. And then people want to be like, oh, I wouldn't let them go to Diddy's. Like, what about school where a lot of bullshit happens, right? Yeah, but they're and not sleeping over at school. They're sleeping over at school. And I agree with you. There's a lot of things going on. And there's a lot of shit that happens days. at school, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, today, yeah. So, you know, and, and just think about I'm not letting this person that I don't know have influence over my kid mm -hmm. every day. I'm good on that shit. You know what I'm saying? But, that comes but do you with, think so, that comes that, with having the things that you have? What if you're a parent and you really don't have much to offer for your well, kid? You're specifically a single parent. Huh? Specifically, what Nat is but asking is money. That doesn't make you not be a parent <laughs> because you shouldn't be fit. a parent. Yeah, but no think about it. You have some of these kids; they have single parents. Their parents that's like, unfortunate. That's unfortunate, that's unfortunate for sure, but it's still happening. So you have that's these single parents, maybe, we'll say they're single, I'm not saying all of them, but maybe you have parents who don't have the resources and they're like, this is the shot that... This isn't a take. maybe now. Yeah. People do that a lot. 95% yeah, no. of people yeah, don't have that. If you look at that. the R. Kelly situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was disgusted by this True. documentary because it a, it's Same. a movie, right? Thank you. And I'm looking at parents that used to send, you sent your daughter off mm -hmm. to be with yeah, him. Go yeah. be yeah. with that man. Mm -hmm. Look, I seen a, wow. I, I, I experienced that, like so with my too. mother, right? My mother 
was a beautiful woman. My mother been on her own since she was 15 years old, right? Her parents wasn't shit. Her, her husband, I remember one time, he was one of the biggest drug dealers in New York, used to beat her ass, right? Mm. And I was a kid, I couldn't do nothing, I hated him. And one day, her father, I never call him my grandfather, but her father mm -hmm. came to the house, and I was like, perfect. Yeah. Granddaddy going, you know, you know what he did? Nothing. Hey, man, hey. Hmm. He tried to reason with him. What? I was like, fuck this guy. You know what I'm saying? This is what parents do. Mm -hmm. And her mom was, was like, that's a good man. He got money. Mm -hmm. wow. This Still. is what parents do, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because their lives are fucked up. So yeah. they're looking for their child to be a meal ticket or to right. be some kind of relief for them. Yeah, they don't so care. Important. They don't care. So, and look, I say it starts, it's so important. You, you got to be mindful of who your children is with every day at school. Percent. That's important. Right? There's no customization of education. What are they learning? Why are they learning that? So the, I don't know. So then my question is, right, and I agree with you, you shouldn't even let your kids go anywhere. I didn't sleep over anybody's house. I still don't sleep over people's house. Yeah, yeah. But my, so then, then the argument then comes, okay, you have somebody who's trying to do business with these A-lister people. What is the fine line of like, is it, oh, I, I can't do business with them because they do these things? Or do they, do they have to stop doing if these things? If you know that they that? do foul things. But how mm -hmm. would you know sometimes these people don't know? Oh, if you don't know, you don't know, right? Okay. And, but you should be able to have some level of discernment to kind of see, mm -hmm. I think they moving kind of funny. We out of here, board mission. Listen, money is not the end all. And right. the issue uh -huh. is this. Yes. Most people, I don't care what they say their religion is, to them, God is money. Yeah. Let me, money is their God. So you, when people could divorce themselves from that kind of relationship mm -hmm, with money, mm -hmm. things would be a little bit different. Let me ask you um, two things. And Malik, I'm gonna, I just sent you something. Um, you said your son is 18. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say he was 16. Uh, you said you would not send your daughters to go stay with Elon Musk or Sam Altman. Your son's 16, and he wants to go stay at someone's house, but it's a lady. You let him go? Late. A lady, lady. A, woman. Oh, a woman, why? CEO. He's gonna go no, stay at Ariana Huffington's well, house, I'm Huffington for Post. What? I'm out for what? <laughs> I, I need a good answer. You, Listen, if they got a good it's answer, it's a business opportunity. Maybe. If there's a good answer, so maybe. you'd let your son go, my son, but yeah. not your daughter. Yeah, you know why? Why the why? double standard? So different. Because a boy and a girl is not the same for 100%. one. My you son, that, my son, for <laughs> one. Can fight. <laughs> he's been training he's since he was. Ariana Huffington's uh, uh, ass. <laughs> but also, Listen, also yeah. my son is not stupid, yeah. right? He like pop. This is weird. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He'll let me know. So I'm not, I'm not as concerned yeah. for him. But I'm protecting my little girls at all costs. That's Everybody's gonna die. By the way, thank you. you. I my appreciate it. Dying. I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm like, with you. Know, you. I appreciate it. Like, I appreciate it because that it is. You have to you have to establish that. Yeah. You're gonna let so your son different. honestly there's a lot of dudes out there that were like, How was it? I hit it, bro. My dog like what? That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> but a daughter, like she's like, Yeah, he, we did it. Like, oh, I gotta kill somebody now. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. Yeah. By the way, we didn't we talked about Diddy, we talked about the Epsteins, we talked about um, Weinstein, you brought up R. Kelly. Mm hmm Okay. What the fuck was that happened with this guy? Just because I didn't do anything wrong, I'm going to show you something here. I used to play basketball with R. Kelly I in South Beach. Video, this guy was an insane... <laughs> we used to ball. Yeah. Horrible three-point shot. I can say it now that he's not in jail. R. Kelly can't shoot for shit. He said save that And we time. actually... Uh, do we have that video? <laughs> so at the time, I was doing a lot of money content, interviewing mm -hmm. celebrities and whatever. So I was like, yo, um, Kels, let, let, after we play a ball, like, shoot this little video real quick. It's actually the first time I'm actually fucking releasing it. Save that money. He says you gotta know it's true. Yeah, and by the way, I hope I hope he actually saved that money to pay for his court costs because he's gonna be in jail potentially the rest he, he of his life. He didn't say that money. That's why he, okay. he didn't say that money. It's one of those things you never know with this guy, Kelly. Yeah. Um, Kian, you're hearing all this. I know there's a part of you that's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> why you guys hurt my eardrums out here? But Adults and children and staying and not staying, that's a real thing, bro. If you ever that's saw the movie, movie. Uh, The Sound of Freedom, mm -hmm. uh, what a movie. What yes. a freaking movie. Yes. Um, this is a real thing. Um, you're hearing all these conversations. How do you feel about this subject? I mean, I, I love what Mike said about, as a parent, taking full accountability and responsibility for your own life so you don't have to depend on your child. I think that the thought of that's a little gross to me. It's a little repulsive, actually. I understand there's 
people that come from really rough situations where naturally you don't have the ability to make all the money in the world and be in the best position. I understand that. But to be a parent and to put all the weight on the child mm-hmm. to be the savior, yeah. mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah. that, like that's not taking any responsibility mm-hmm. for yourself yes. and ultimately will lead you to using your child. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a terrible place to put a child is in a position mm-hmm. where they have to be the one to take the family out of it. Now, naturally, children take on that burden, mm-hmm. uh, but to not have to. And I didn't come from a situation where, I mean, I'm blessed. I'm beyond blessed to have a dad who I don't have to replace what he is doing. He's stepping up, being the man he's supposed to be. So I have that positive association. Uh, but I just think it's up to a man, which is very rare in today's world, mm-hmm. to be able to not have to depend on your child to get you out of a terrible place. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was in a position where yeah. my child, which I will be, in a position where my, my daughter or son, which I don't have right now, is in a position to have the opportunity to be in a place like that, where they're that good at something, mm-hmm. I'm gonna show up. Like, mm-hmm. I'm showing up, yeah. I'm gonna talk to them, I'm gonna be able to be fully involved in the whole process. Yeah. And that's gonna be because I position myself to be able to do that. Right. Now, a lot of other parents, maybe they're not in that position because they don't have the time to do that. Right. But I don't take it lightly being a parent, mm-hmm. therefore, I wanna be able to be in the position to be able to mm-hmm. look out for them and show up in that place to fully yes. know what's going on in the circumstance. Awesome answer. Uh, I'll say this. Um, you know, you're talking about the kids being sort of the cash cow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, look, when I was 13, 15, many, many, many moons ago, bro, I ran circles around my parents. Like, I was running the shit in my house. I'm like, uh, Pops, you gotta go to work today. Mom, what time are you picking me up? Oh, my kids. sister, like, go to, you're grounded. Like, 13 year old kids grind, is not an eight year old. Huh? You grounded your sister? What? You grounded her? <laughs> Bitch, go to your room. <laughs> okay? That's hilarious. And she'd be like, you go to your room. I'm like, all right, let's send the parents to the room. Let's go party. Um, but 13 and 15, when you're that talented, that hungry, like you have some say in the situation. Mm-hmm. Like I was a, you were, you played in the NFL, right? Yeah, I had the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Um, you were absolute fitness guru beast. I played college football, played some basketball. Like when you're 13, 15 and you got the skills, like mm-hmm. you're hungry, you're gonna wanna go after yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Justin Bieber and Usher, by the way, how to work out for them? Uh, superstars. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't they're like, hey, I want to give it a shot at Puffy Flavor Camp. All right, how was it? It's like, yeah, I'm the biggest movie star, uh, uh, music star yeah. in the world. Yeah. Kind of worked out. Mm-hmm. So there are two sides of the coin. I do agree with you. The cash cow with the kid. Um, by the way, show up the picture of uh, Diddy Epstein out there, Malik. Um, awesome conversations out here. We're going to find out, yeah. like you said, Innocent to prove it guilty, but here's what I can guarantee: the internet's gonna keep showing shit like that yeah. until this shit gets solved. Yeah. Despite how much Kian says, "Focus on your work, bro." <laughs> um, I'll keep saying it. Keep saying it, and I appreciate that. Awesome conversation about Diddy. Two more topics that we're gonna lap up, wrap up. Cool. I already know what you gotta go do. No, it's fine. Oh wow! <laughs> Impressed by Amy. Um, here's something we're not gonna spend too much time on this, but it is breaking news as of today. We have legal scholars here, apparently, oh. right? We have someone who learned from the school of hard knocks. I'm a legal scholar myself. Exactly. <laughs> we have Kian, who's basically saying, focus on yourself, nothing else. And we have Nat, that's just... Valutainment. Valutainment. <laughs> um, breaking news as of today was Sam Bankman fried mm. the founder of uh, yeah. FTX, yeah. crypto, um, sentenced, 25 years in prison. Um, here's a dude where the first time I saw, so my, just full disclosure, my best friend, you know my best friend, Adrian. Yes, Adrian. Um, I invested in his crypto company. Mm-hmm. I gave him a nice chunk of money. At one point, it was worth a ridiculous amount of money. Um, yeah, I just lost my train of thought. It was that much money. And then the market crashed. Um, and now it's kind of coming back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I gave seed capital out of my own pocket to someone that was in this space. And he would tell me about this guy, Sam Bankman Freed. And for me, I, you know, Pat, PBD wrote the book, Choose Your Enemies Wisely. I don't really have enemies, but there's two types of people. I don't like what's going on here. Hmm. Number one are extremists, Mm -hmm. who there's no room for compromise, just extreme individuals. 
And the second are just sloppy people, yeah. sloppiness, <clears throat> right? So the first time I saw Sam Bakeman Freed on an interview with Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, something like meeting with presidents, and he shows up in cargo shorts mm -hmm. and like a floppy T-shirt. Instinctually, I'm like, what's going on here? This is, Not right. this is weird to me. Yeah. And Adrian, mm -hmm. you know, love him. He's like, no, I met him a few times. He's really smart. You know, he's a visionary. I say, yeah, put some pants on, homie. That's real. You're sitting with legit people. This. Yikes. Okay? That's Come crazy. on, dude. That's weird. I saw this. I don't know if you can find the year, Malik. By the way, who's, a, who's sitting there? Is it Tony Blair from the UK? Mm. Former yeah. prime minister. I don't know who it is exactly. Uh, scroll up to the person on the left. I think that's Tony Blair, former, former prime minister. He's sitting with the president of the United States and a former uh, prime minister of the UK. I think that's who it is. And you show up in fucking Umbros. What, what is this dude wearing? I said, I don't trust this dude. Mm -hmm. look, look how that turned out. Yeah. So that's just my little story right there. <laughs> so disgraced, and I mean it, disgraced crypto investor, Sam Bankman fried sentenced to 25 years today by a Manhattan judge. Um, I'm getting emotional for all the money yeah, I was gonna say. that I lost. <clears throat> he stole $8 billion in this Ponzi scheme of sorts uh, for the bankrupted FTX cryptocurrency exchange. Um, prosecutors were advocating for 40 to 50 years. His defense legal team was hoping for a shorter sentence, five to six years. They settled on 25 years. Um, by the way, here it is right here. The, um, what they're saying is that anyone that money was stolen will be um, receiving their irrecoverable losses back. So they'll be getting their money back. And um, it's just some finality to whatever is going on in crypto. Bitcoin, frankly, I've got some Bitcoin. I've got some crypto. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. The, the number one thing that I said in 2022 that crypto needs is trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust. We saw FTX, the biggest crypto exchange. Um, Coinbase? Coinbase is actually legit. I have Coinbase. There was the, Binance, CZ, he's turned out to be a fraudster, a huckster. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on here. Do you have any crypto? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to you. By the way, the, what, the only story this reminds me of was when I got into the finance w world, the biggest story in that year, 2007, 2008, that year was Bernie Madoff. Mm -hmm. um, Wall Street financier, um, Ponzi scheme, 2009, he was convicted, $65 billion. Mm. Um, FTX, Sam Bankman fried only uh, $8 billion. So just doing some math, SBF is getting one and a half years per billion that he embezzled. Bernie Madoff got 2.3 years per billion. Um, Mike, as a legal scholar and someone that avoided mm -hmm. doing the time, for this dude, um, the cargo shorts, bro, what? Um, serving 25 years, does the, does the time fit the crime? What's your opinion? Honestly, he should have got at least 25 to life for the shorts. <laughs> uh, the line of the day a 15 year enhancement for the hair <laughs> and um, we can cut him some slack on the t-shirt but nah I throw the book at him throw the book at him because you know what you're doing mm -hmm. right it's so you know people are like the people that it's investing maybe there are some rich people but there's some people that's all they got it's yep. like man this is what I got right and to take from those people for your personal expenses and, and your little weird world Fuck these guys. Fuck those guys. Because you know what? For years, you've seen, like, I, you said the 90s, the biggest thing was, like, the West Coast, East Coast beef. But yep. that's not it. It was a lot, right? But one of the things, Enron. it was a lot, that too. But Enron. it was. We interviewed, I interviewed your, the CFO. Your, your, Clint, your Clinton homies, they had, a, they had a, a huge campaign, if you will, against black men in big cities, right? Mm -hmm. Targeting us with vicious sentences for unfair things, right? But anyway. 
in that time, there was a show called Cops, right? Mm. Cops made, bad black, boys, men, bad they boys. made black men look what like the do? worst criminals in the world. Because yep. you show you a, a petty criminal with a shirt off running from the cops, right? Mm -hmm. When there's people like him, like these guys, like Bernie Madoff, Sam Bateman Freed, who's destroying people's lives. Yep. Mm -hmm. Scot free. Nothing ever happens to these guys. They get some some uh, federal trade commission fines and they move on, right? So I want to see these people come down. Fuck these people. Those are real criminals, mm -hmm. and th their level of criminology really affects society. Yeah. Uh, somebody <clears throat> stealing from Seven Eleven doesn't is not impactful. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, let's throw the book at these. So yeah, what a point. Um, but way more people are gonna have the opportunity to rob a 7-Eleven mm -hmm. or jack a car or battery, all that, mm -hmm. than run a billion dollar Ponzi scheme fund. Mm -hmm. So the law, it's all about following the law. Yeah. And you are right. There has been um, a lot of situations Marketing. like that. Yeah. That, that um, turn regular people, especially the, the, the drug war. The drug war has been an absolute sham. Right. Locking people up for having weed. Yeah. Um, you know, even certain states like Oregon legalize and decriminalize all weed. Turns out that backfired, and they're like, "Nah, we can't just have druggies going everywhere." So there is some balance and some nuance. Yeah. But I totally understand. Wait, was it like other drugs? Wasn't that hard drugs that they actually decriminalized? I don't yeah. think it was over the they weed. They decriminalized Adam. everything. Yeah, I don't okay. think it was the like, weed. Even <laughs> LSD, that made them shrooms, do that. all that. Amy, uh, we can roll back this fucking tape. They decriminalized. All drugs. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were just saying weed. You specifically said weed in that. No, not at all. They decriminalized all yeah, drugs. No, that's what I thought. I no. thought you were just saying weed. Go smoke some weed. That's if that's what everyone did. <laughs> like, right. Least of my words. <laughs> I'm talking about shooting up heroin on the right. street and being like, yeah, by the way, go uh, do it over there. That's your heroin. Like, good. That's Bobby what I'm talking fine. about. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> As someone that has maybe smoked a joint in my day, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, heroin on the streets, not no, fine. We can't be having that. Okay. Can't be decriminalizing all that. Mm -hmm. But the point is, you make a great case. Where do these guys end up? Club fed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. White collar it's crime. A, it's a camp. Yeah. Mm. It's not prison. It's a they, camp. Yeah. But no, you know what? No bars. You know what? These pe no, nobody knows about Jim Johnson that goes to jail for robbing the 7 Eleven, whatever. He's never heard from again. These people, Sam Bankman Freed, if your last name is Bankman Freed, you change your last name. Or if you're like Bernie Madoff and Bernie Madoff's kids, you blow your fucking brains out. If your last name is Madoff, you don't go out the house Kill anymore. Yeah. They, his sons had no idea about what he was doing. They Epstein themselves. Let's just put it oh, that way. Okay. And then he also no longer with us. So mm. there's levels to this is all I'm saying. Yeah. Different it's, stuff. It's a shame. Last freaking topic on this amazing show. This is... Can I throw some in there real quick? Yeah, on please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, I was someone that was affected by the big crypto scams. I lost a bunch of money in Celsius, okay. which I ended up getting you know, like 50, 60 percent back. Which initially, obviously, I'm very frustrated by what happened and thinking I got screwed over big time by some of the guys that run it, which they were also liars. Some would have signed Bankman Freed. But then once I have the initial frustration that moves past me, I think it's so important to be able to take personal responsibility. <laughs> like, dude, like I put that money in there. Yep. I shouldn't be listening to some other dude and putting all my faith in him. Why'd I do that? Well, because I thought he's going to deliver the dream to me. I'm collecting, you know, 70% interest on my crypto, just sitting in there doing nothing. I can't be naive to think that there's not some type of cost on the other end of that. Mm. So even if we do sit here and say, hey, yeah, they deserve serious camp time or jail time, which I'm actually not opposed to, we then have to bring it back to ourselves and say, okay, what was the headspace I was in when I put that money in there? Was I thinking that they were going to sell me a dream? A little bit of nuance to that, though. Yeah, I, please. I feel you. It would be different if they knew that these guys were hustling, right? Mm -hmm. If they knew that things weren't on the up and up. If you're giving me, if you're making, uh, if I'm making you a uh, uh, investment opportunity, I'm giving you one, right? Yep. And look, everything's legit. This is what we're doing, X, mm -hmm. Y, so, so on and so forth. But I'm not telling you, like, I'm actually going to take your money and pay this off. I'm going to do this with this money. So on and so forth, you know at some point somebody's gonna come up short. I do. That's not fair, right? So you're 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 being a normal person that trusts people's word, which is I think is okay. Right? Which is naive. It's not it, it, but, it's, but it's hard. Thing, we have, we have to trust, yeah, we have to trust, but it, at the end of the day It's not naive because it's it's like a normal person does not say, 
I'm going to do this, and they don't do it, right? That's not normal to lie mm -hmm. to that degree. A normal person is not going to take somebody's money knowing they're not going to do the right thing with it. That's not okay. So, look, and I'm a person that, like, somebody get me, I got to get them tenfold, mm -hmm. right? However, I'm not. I am. Like, vengeance is mine. <laughs> yeah. That's how I live. You know I, what I, mean? I don't so, want them to take that much power from me. Is, they're not taking power from me. Yeah, it is. You're, I'm, no, they're no, controlling no, no. your decisions That's, after that. No, no, no. It's my decision. There's people that have tried to fuck me over, and I said, yo, all right, this is what's going to happen. They're like, Mike, be, be calm, be rational. No thanks. I don't want to. I'm deciding to, and I'm not irrational about anything. Everything I do is calculated, and I do what I want to do. I, I don't live in this, and I create my own rules, period, right? Same. So there's a lot of notions and narratives. Oh, you shouldn't judge. You shouldn't this. You should. I don't hear any of that. I go, I go by what makes sense to me and what benefits myself and my family and my friends. Yep. That's it. So <clears throat> I'm not, there's nobody, just because I choose to get vindication, that doesn't mean that they made me do, they're controlling my decision. I'm choosing to do that. By the I, way. Because I'm right, good at right, it. Yeah. By the I'm way, I'm so it. glad you interrupted me from this. This is such an important conversation. And I'm gonna say one thing and then we gotta go to the last story. Okay. What a point. Um, Cause this is my world right now, finance. Um, what you're talking about is something called asset allocation and diversification. Diversification. Uh, I've been down to the um, Bitcoin annual events out there. I've interviewed every single Bitcoiner person out there, every big, big person. Um, Michael Saylor, billionaire. Um, Pomp, you know, he's got a ton of money these days. Everyone down to the just smallest investor. And when I go to these conferences, here's what I find. These people are such Bitcoin enthusiasts mm -hmm. and crypto enthusiasts. And I ask them one question. Here it is. This has to do with asset allocation. What percentage of your overall portfolio is in crypto? So for me, full disclosure, I will put 10% of my portfolio in crypto. I'm in cash. To be honest with you, 80% of my money is in the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've got millions in there. And then I have a nice fucking chunk of change in crypto. And then I keep some cash on deck because save that money. We all know that. <laughs> Do you know the answer that I would get from these people? 100%, bro. 100%. How do you pay rent? I keep a little for rent. 100%. When they get fucked, that's on them. Mm -hmm. wow, yeah. They were greedy enough. You know, there's the fear greed index. Yeah. You can probably pull this up. You know, Warren Buffett says, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy where people are fearful. Mm -hmm. If you have a hundred grand to your name or 10 grand to your name and you put it all in Dogecoin, bro, good luck. Good luck. You put it all into FTX, that's your choice. What I would say is keep a good amount of cash on deck, build the foundation of your house, start investing, retirement accounts, 401ks, Roth IRAs, index funds, ETFs, mutual funds, REITs, gold. Now let's talk about crypto. Cool. But when you go, there you go. People are greedy as fuck. 71 right now. Yeah. Uh, be fearful is what that means. But if you go, this is your point, 100% crypto, bro. You ride or die with crypto. That's it. That's in this. So last topic. Um, and then we got to wrap. This is the happy ending. Great show. I love this. Yeah. Every single second of this. We got to do this one quick because we got bills to pay. Um, there's a guy out there. You might have heard of him. His name is Dan Bilzerian. Dan Bilzerian just made a ridiculous announcement. Um, we're going to play the video. You're going to pull that up, Malik. Dan Bilzerian. When you think of Dan Bilzerian, join me, guys. What do you think of? What do you think of? It's in your head right now. When I think of Dan Bilzerian, you know what I think of? Monogamy. <laughs> He's a one-woman kind of guy. Round of applause, right? Yeah, because listen to what he has to say, because he's basically saying now that monogamy is better than sleeping with thousands of women. Scroll down, there's a video. Um, serial playboy Dan Bilzerian recently said on an episode of The Mighty Pursuit, it's a podcast that monogamy is superior to a hedonistic lifestyle, a realization he has come 
to learn only after sleeping with thousands of women. <laughs> Why? He called, hold on, hold on. He says monogamy is, loud, is um, more fulfilling. They ask how much? How many women have you slept with? Thousands. Dog, I don't lost count. Damn. He said, um, on average, you would sleep with three girls a day. And if you only slept with two girls a day, something was off. His most in one day was nine. <gasps> we're going to play the video, and then we're going to have a final <laughs> conversation. Okay. And we'll go for this. Go ahead, play this video, Mr. Malik. A, on average, at least, at a minimum. <laughs> I mean, the, like, if I only had sex with two girls in a day, that was like... We're having some real off day or something, right? Yeah. And some days four, sometimes five, video, seven. I, the most was nine. How many, how many women have you slept with in your life total? Thousands. I, I had this image in my mind when I was growing up of like how awesome this would be. I don't know, what I kind of landed on was I think it's like better to have a monogamous relationship, as strange as that is going for me. <laughs> You've got two choices. You can just like do whatever you want and you know be free and like allow the women to be free and just use condoms with all the girls and not care about if they hook up with other guys and it's just like purely sexual and whatever. Or I think you can find a girl that you enjoy spending time with and that you actually trust each other. But I think it's unlikely to find a woman that is gonna be okay with you sleeping with other women that actually cares about you for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Even if the girl is okay with it, I think that you like cause internal damage to mm -hmm. her. Yeah. I do think that like one cool girl that you that does stuff with you that you actually have a mental connection with, I think the sex is better. I think you're more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I think you have less things to deal with, less distractions. Your energy is not being pulled in a mm -hmm. bunch of different directions. So I think there is hope to like longer term monogamy and like staying attractive to the woman. Claps for him. Yay. 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 All the girls. Yay. <laughs> I'm sorry the guys are you like. You know what's so oh, funny to me? <laughs> okay. Like, okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got excited. Why are you like, clapping? It's horrible video. Because it's good to see people go through their life experiences and experience one thing and then be able to take those experience and come to a different realization. Okay. And, and this is a realization that I personally agree with. So it's okay. nice to see somebody who comes from that, having that lifestyle of having all this access to saying, you know, hey, like, you know, I'm coming to a point where, mm -hmm. you know, I see the value in maybe just having one. But you were yeah. like legit clapping, not like a sarcastic clap. Yeah, it? but okay. it, it's because it's sincere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's yeah. sincere. Well, you guys all clap seriously, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to say, you're happy for Dan Bilzerian. You know, three girls a day, nine no, on a good not day, that um, no. thousands of women. He's going to practice monogamy. Let's clap it up for Dan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, Everybody has their it's our turn now. Journey. Um, <laughs> some chick. <laughs> famous, not famous, slept with three men a day, uh, nine on a busy day, uh, says, guys, it's time for monogamy. What would our clap look like? It'd Gentlemen, no it would be no clap. Like, There's right. no fucking like, cool clap. Story. She's used up. We're just, this this, is, this is what our clap would look like. This is what our clap would look like. One. You're a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, bitch? <laughs> it's time. So we're, People want to hear what they want. To, they want we're, confirmations to their lives. We're bias. identifying something <laughs> that sure. men yeah. and women and sex mm -hmm. and partners and Are body count yes. might be a little different out mm -hmm. there, guys. Mm -hmm. Clap it up. Yeah. So, it is you know, when I, it is different. Thank yes, you. Yes, it is. But, you know, the hookup culture and the feminism would lead you to believe, ladies, why do we got a double standard? It's not. So the conversation that we're going to have, everyone's going to get a chance to answer. You know, uh, a woman will sleep with a man who has slept with hundreds if not thousands of women as a badge of honor. Mm. I slept with Leonardo DiCaprio. Tamed him. She tamed him. I slept with Andrew Tate. I slept with Hugh Hefner, Will Chamberlain, that seven foot dude holding it down. Um, princes, sheiks, presidents, what have you. Um, no man is like, I slept with that dirty ass hoe. She slept with thousands of guys, I'm honored. <laughs> No yes. guy thinks like that, sure. right, gentlemen? So Correct. there's a difference here. Mm -hmm. So you know what you call 
a guy who has the ability to sleep with hundreds, if not thousands of women, what would you call someone like him? A capable, accomplished man. A as high value dude as it gets. Mm -hmm. He puts himself in a position for all the victor goes, the spoils, the luxuries of life, the yachts, the cars, the houses, and yes, the women. But a woman who sleeps with three dudes a day, nine on a good day, two on a slow day, what are we calling her, Mike? Kim? Poor. Oh, busy. <laughs> <laughs> She's a porn star or a sex worker. Yeah. Um, we hear about the double standard all the time. Is this debate kind of over, Mike, Kian, Luayan on this? Yeah, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio with men and women. But I'm gonna say I agree with what he said right here. You know, mm -hmm. um, like I'm, I'm good over here. You well, know what I'm saying? You better. Yeah, She's yeah, looking I'm at you. Good over here. You know? <laughs> so, no, nah, and I mean it. If she wasn't yeah. here. I'd say the same thing. Uh, but one thing I don't relate to is, and I'm a man who have practiced polygamy, mm -hmm. but never a hedonistic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's because it wasn't like he was talking about monogamy versus polygamy, mm -hmm. love is love, but he was talking about monogamy versus hedonism, three yes. and four mm -hmm. types of girls a day. Yeah. I'm like, you don't got shit to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, he got shit to do, Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally do. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I don't relate to that part. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I know. So you're not going to clap for Dan? Nah. No. no. You, you notice right. it's so I mean, amazing. Everybody All say the cool girls things. are so proud of you. All those guys are like, like, no shit, bro. All right, bro. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kian, you play in the NFL. You're a tall, good-looking dude. I'm sure you've had your fun. How are you processing this Dan Bilzerian coming of ages situation? Well, first of all, is who the fuck would listen to him? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, why would you listen to a guy that was addicted to ED pills? Like, along the t like, everybody hears that and thinks it's all sexy and glamorous, but, like, he was high and he was also taking a bunch of erectile dysfunction pills as well during the process of all that. Mm -hmm. So I also love what Mike said in regard to it not being a healthy representation of like a potentially healthy polygamous lifestyle, which I'm not saying I'm for or against, but we're talking about extremes here. So mm -hmm. why would you listen to a guy that literally went to a whole other end, of, an extremely unhealthy mm -hmm. end of the extreme where he talks about where he's obsessed with talking to girls all the time, setting mm -hmm. things up all the time. That's what he's spending all of his time doing, obviously as a business as well. I think it's a big risk and had a lot of success, which I'm not demeaning. But it's just like someone that's lived that wild of a life. I mean, there's got to be some deeper psychological things there that I would never listen to him when it comes to something about polygamy or monogamy. But wouldn't you say also this is also when you see people make certain decisions in their life, it's a way of you learning a lesson without going through it as well. So someone like that, you know, he's able to also give perspective of living a life like that, you know, that That's temptation no, I, no, does I disagree. Come. No, no, I disagree. It, it comes down to the individual, absolutely. I it think each individual, individual. each individual has to be able to experience the other end of the spectrum because there are a lot of guys that come from Christian households mm -hmm. that are told that they need to show up in a monogamous relationship sure. and they show up in a certain way that actually ends up preventing them from fully showing up as the man they need to be because they haven't allowed themselves to experience another end of the spectrum. So I would say, depending on where you're from, mm -hmm. as far as how you were raised, you need to experience the other end of the spectrum to truly determine what it is that you want to do with your life mm -hmm. and how you want sure. to live. For sure, but you also have to consider though, you know, maybe, you know, I agree people sometimes do have to experience certain things to realize that's something bad, but, you know, it's people like this that if someone's going through the things that he's going through, they can kind of look to him like that's kind of what my reality would look like. Mm -hmm. It's an example of if I keep making these decisions, that's kind of maybe the direction I would go. So as much as I would never listen to him, I think it's also something to consider someone with that massive amount of success, someone with that massive mm -hmm. amount of access, you know, making those decisions. Whether you make it or not, you can kind of see this is maybe the mm -hmm. way I'm going <clears throat> if I keep going this route. Now, depending on the person listen I'm someone's like I gotta try myself to know what's up that's how I am and no matter if it's this is what my life is gonna be like or not so there's gonna be you also don't want to be so like like avoidant of these things because you can go down the, a path that you don't need to go down and right. an example is right in front of you you know what I mean yeah but I, I still wouldn't deter someone that has a desire to go down that path to not I think it's not up to me or anybody else to try to make sure someone doesn't make mistakes. I think life is about experiences and being willing to explore areas of life that we truly have a desire to explore. Sure. But I would ask anybody that does desire to go down that path, I'd say, well, what's your motivation for it? 
why do you want to do that? Where does that come from? And really understand that at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it comes from a place of really desiring to do that because that's just who they are. And maybe they want to do that. Maybe they will. But other people, maybe there's not a legitimate reason behind it. But I think it's very important. By the way, I think we just found out what Kian cares about, y'all. What? This topic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Got some meat in there. You know what it is? He's like, what do I care about? Body count. Yeah. What do I care about? (laughs) My man cares. Uh, Real quick before I give a little final thing. Why did you clap for Dan Bilzerian? Uh, I agree with Nat. I think growth is a beautiful thing. Even if you can't relate to it or even if you disagree with it, to see someone grow as a human being and change their perspective or their idea about something that obviously he felt so strongly about because his whole lifestyle was Mm -hmm. that. That was his brand, you Mm -hmm. know, for a really long time. So it only took him a couple thousand girls to grow up. What did you say, Mike? You just said some faster than others. I'll come back Mm -hmm. and say. Uh, Flo, why did you clap for Dan Bilzerian? Yes, it's great that he got to learn his lesson and now he's on the right path. Yeah. But evidently, making that decision, how much damage did he cause to himself and to other people? Because guess what? And I mentioned this the last time I think that I was here, which yeah. was months ago. But when you sleep with someone, it's a spiritual transaction. So it's not just like, okay, you're getting the job done. I'm good. I'm right. gone. Bye. That's why the girl screams, oh, God. Stop. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of God, you're a Christian it. conservative. <laughs> yeah. Even you. Who's saving yourself till marriage? Yeah. Clapped for Dan Bilzerian. As in clapping for what I already knew, which is monogamy is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the best way. It's God's way. This is how I see our father, God. Yep. I see if you're a good father, you will put parameters for your children. Mm -hmm. If you know that if they jump off of, of dock and they don't know how to swim, they're young, they could die. So you put parameters in place to protect the, your child that you love. So when you have sex, you, uh, um, you're becoming one with somebody. It's sacred. It's a spiritual transaction. So that's not meant to be a recreational sport to be had with all these right. people. Mm-hmm. And you're also protecting yourself your heart, your mind, because there is a chemical bonding that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just spiritual, it's scientific. Chemical bonding is happening when you're having sex with somebody. Neurotransmitters are are like passing through and you're becoming one with a person. Mm -hmm. That's not meant to be with a bunch of people. And then you're saving yourself from getting diseases, from getting um, unwanted pregnancy. Like there's so many benefits to waiting and so he just proved the fact that God is right. Like, <laughs> it's not a good idea to have sex with a bunch of people or to treat sex as a <clears throat> casual recreational sport. Well said. Yeah. Guys, she's single. You want to hold you? <laughs> 28. Saving yourself to marriage, Christian, conservative, 28-year-old virgin? Yes, I, I grew up in the church. That's what we do. Like, that's Guys, what we wait till give marriage. a shout out. To, Plug yourself. For where can you? No, no, no. Where can they find you? <laughs> no, no, no. Stop <laughs> it. You're going to be like, let me find my man. We're going to get you. Amen. Day of his hand. She wants a good man, Christian man, He's gonna a little body church. count man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jane, my oh, homegirl, my, my Miami friend. Why did you clap for Dan Bilzerian? Um... I mean, there's so much to dive into this topic and I'm so passionate about it. But I will say, and I have to agree with you about the, the transaction of like spirits when you are, I think, you know, having sex with someone is the most intimate thing I think you can do. Well, there's different mm-hmm. intimate things, but I think that it's so important, especially women, you know, we're so powerful and not in a seductive way or a way to manipulate men, but in a way to give yourself to a man, to love him, to nurture him, to care for him. So I think that, you know, as a woman, you should be very selective with the person or somebody that you're sleeping with or taking care of, essentially. And um, as a woman doing that, you know, a man should also be as selective. Like if you're out there, you have money and all these things, you should be very selective with who you're bringing around you and who you're allowing your soul to connect with. So that's why I clap for him because I think as a valuable person, everyone's valuable, but I think you should be very careful with who you are giving your energy to. And and that's what I'm huge about. Well yeah, says my homegirl, Jane. Yeah, <laughs> um, Poor girl. By the way, before I even answer Amy this question, round of applause for Amy. She 
Give him tea today. Two hours. I need to go so bad. I need to go so bad right now. <laughs> By the way, so you, do you want to answer the question or do you want to go pee? I'll answer the question real quick. So why did you clap? The reason why I clapped is because I actually agree with like a lot of what the red pill says, but I do think they take things to the extreme mm -hmm. oftentimes. And you do hear a lot of guys purport that any man who has the option to have multiple women is always going to go that route. It's only the men who mm -hmm. don't have the option who are going to succumb to monogamy. And I think that sometimes you need to achieve these things. Sometimes you need to make all the money to realize money isn't everything. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need to yep. screw all the ladies to realize that screwing ladies isn't everything. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that it's good, uh, mostly for what Nat said. It's the example that it sets to some of these other men. And now we have a case study for these extremist red pill guys to be like, hey, well. There you go. Course. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You want to wait should. one minute before we wrap up? I'll do it. I'll wait. <laughs> Clap it up it. for Amy, y'all. <laughs> go, Amy. So, um, I'm gonna I give, can't promise I'll do it next week. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give, I'll give my little spiel, and then I want the guys to um, plug everything they want to plug. Uh, here's what I want. Look, as a born-again virgin, mm -hmm. I want to <laughs> tell you Yesterday. guys what I'm thinking. I encourage uh, all men to test drive as many cars as possible. No. That's my opinion. <laughs> Make sure you got insurance. Make sure you got insurance on your car. Have insurance. Hold on, y'all. Test drive as many cars as possible. I mean that in a multitude of factors. Because there's a difference between somebody like Dan Bilzerian saying, hey, monogamy, when you bang 2,000 women and some 21-year-old kid who's trying to get ladies like, yeah, thanks, Dan. Let me go do what I got to do for a hot minute, and then I'll take your advice maybe in like 10 years. And that comes to women, that comes to drugs, that comes to experience, that comes to partying, that comes to cars, that comes to houses. You know, until you learn for yourself, uh, no one's taking advice from Dan Bilzerian in this regard. Everyone wants to learn from themselves. By the way, ladies, um, don't test drive too many cars um, because then you're gonna put a little miles and a little tread on them tires. And we just established that nobody's clapping for the girl who's like, I'm a monogamy girl now. You don't want After slick tires. Ago. No slick tires. No, no. We want our thing. 100%. <laughs> because we know one thing is true, that women are judged by their past and men are judged by their future. Facts. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares when 2,472 slept with Dan Bilzerian. She's like, I don't know. He slept with her. They knew exactly what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. Um, the, at the end of the day, um, a woman and a man, when they get married, a man marries a woman hoping she won't change, and a woman marries a man um, hoping, he hoping that he will. Mm -hmm. And it ain't gonna happen, Cap'n. Anyways, mm -hmm. guys, sick fucking episode. <laughs> Mike, Kian, uh, 10 seconds, where can they find you? Final word. Final word real quick on the monogamy and polygamy for men. No, 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 we got to wrap. Okay, wrap it up. Official Kian on Instagram. Go and follow me there. That's the only spot you can find me. Yeah. MikeRasheed.com or I'm in the first link, hopefully, on this video right now. So <laughs> yes. See y'all soon. By the way, everybody's link is in the, is in, is in the show. Uh, Nat, you got this. Um, Dina's link is in there. Okay. Flo's in there. Daya. Uh, Day. <laughs> Don't forget my name now. I, every time. Um, Jane, Amy, by the way, check yes. out what Amy's doing. Yay, Plug. thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. So I barely slept the last two weeks. I've been working on probably the biggest project of my career so far in content creation. It's a video about the cashless society and the total dystopian future that awaits Australia and other Commonwealth countries unless we start to educate ourselves and start to speak out about this. So if you want to get educated, the link is going to be in the bio as well. And uh, that's going to be up at 8 p.m. Sorry, uh, literally in the next couple hours. And I can finally sleep tonight. Yay. Not a girl. Uh, Sazcast fans, Valuetainment fans, mm -hmm. PBD fans, show that YouTube again. Give our friend Amy a sub. She's working hard. Yep. She's doing her thing. Thank you, and guys. And she didn't even go pee today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you to these fine gentlemen. But the MVP for me today was my friend Nat. She made the show happen. Teamwork. Yay.
This is a team effort. I lost effort. my voice this morning. Team effort. That was Took fun me to the care hospital. Of you. I like How fun was the hospital? I kind of like taking care of him. I was in the doctor's office. I was like, yeah, he's having these symptoms. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you need to help him here. Amazing. Like, uh, yes. I will say this. It was great. I've been to doctor's offices before. We walked in. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> Me be saying, the entire office Jamaican. <laughs> they know how to the take care of people. The secretary, <laughs> the nurse, the, the person doing it. The doctor comes in. I'm like, what is this doctor? What is this doctor? Be <laughs> me boy, what to be going? Like, oh. Great. But they, they were took amazing. care of you, right? They yes. were amazing. I found and we, a good one. Thank you to Nat for making it happen. Great team. Oh. Awesome show. Everybody's links are in the description below. Mm -hmm. Thank you to my production team here at Valuetainment. They make this thing happen. This weekend, Model Volleyball, yes. Miami Beach. Check us out. We'll be there all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And shout out to you guys out there. We out. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.